Okay, that's brilliant. It's recording now. Yeah, even though it's recording, uh, from next class and once you record with your own software. Okay, because here uh, what happens is within this class, uh, uh, in between if you are doing some other activities, all of that stuff also gets recorded. It doesn't look good uh, if you, you know, go back it. So instead, if you have your own software, uh, some kind of you know, uh, recording software, you can do that later point. Okay, I'll talk to you uh, on that later point. Let's jump into the course. I think uh, it's too late already. Five, mi five more minutes, it's over. So for the people who, uh, who are joined here, I think Kumar or some other people, uh, myself, Patty, uh, I'm gonna take you all today with Microsoft Endpoint Manager with respect to the Intune course. So before we jump into uh, this course, just wanted to tell you it's not a single product, okay? It's actually a merge with a different products and we call in a different names, this product. So let's say uh, if I want to call this product, I can call as MEM sometime, that is stands for Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Sometimes we also call it MEM or MEM. And also within this mem, you have a different product, especially the config MGR, which is earlier one. Now we call it this as the SCCM. Okay, so the product was uh, recorded to. Give me a second. So we we make this uh, product actually a part of a uh, different product. So out of that, I'm going to take you here. Uh, the first product I can say within the Microsoft Endpoint Manager, you have something called Microsoft Intune. And also, earlier we used to call SCCM. Now this product is merged with uh, Microsoft Endpoint uh, Manager family. We call this as Config MGR. Okay. And also, we have a co management, uh, is another uh, technology uh, which also talks about the other options. Let's say, uh, you want to manage SCCM, uh, the device, the same device can be managed from Intune as well as from SCCM. In that situation, we make this as the uh, product, okay? So, co-management is used basically uh, to manage your devices with the, both the devices. It's like a bridge. We're going to you know, talk on that uh, in a few more minutes, okay, uh, with the demos, okay? Also, uh, there's another product called Desktop Analytics. This is also a complete um, complete cloud-based product, which is also part of Endpoint Manager now. And uh, basically, this is used for to manage your devices to up-to-date with the latest Windows 10 builds. Let's say you might be running with a 1909 build at this point of time and Microsoft already released 20H2 and also 21H also they're going to release. So in that situation, if you want to migrate Windows 10 build to another build, because these days, if you uh, if you know it earlier, uh, like we used to have Windows uh, 7 and 10, all of that, you know, different altogether version, but from Windows 10, it's operating system as a service. So they are releasing only the build changes. So how do we keep on uh, tracking the build versions to a streamed level? If you don't do that, what happens is um, your applications may not work properly. And also if you are working maybe with a version called maybe X version of your application, tomorrow if you move to next version, that uh, Windows 10 build might not support also. So you need to have a, a proper proven uh, tested method that can actually test those applications properly. So that's where the desktop analytic would be used. So earlier we used to call this as the Windows uh, a reporting kind of thing. And a later point, it is April, if I'm correct, month of Jan or uh, Jan 2021. I think this product has been, you know, merged to desktop analytics family, uh, fully offered as the cloud based. And this also can be integrated with a CCM or your config MGR. Okay, I'm going to also uh, teach you uh, Windows Autopilot. So most of uh, people think that it's part of uh, Intune. Yes, it's part of Intune, but Autopilot is a technology. Okay, it's it's a complete new technology. That's part of Windows 10. 
not from Intune. Okay, it's part of Windows 10. Meaning, uh, if you can understand that Windows 10 technology, you can integrate with other products also. Okay, so I'm going to talk on Windows Autopilot also within this course. And also coming back to the Azure Active Directory, we're going to talk because that's a base. That's the first thing we are going to learn. On top of that, we are going to learn the Intune. Okay, so this entire things to manage, you need to have a central console that's called Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Okay, so that's a console. Uh, we're going to uh, have a look on it. So. Let me take it to the portal uh, to show you as a uh, demo kind of thing. Just the just you know understand you know what we are gonna learn. So this is the admin center portal. Uh, within this portal, uh, we can manage the devices from uh, here. Uh, it can be iOS or maybe Mac or Android or Windows devices. If you see based on the platform that you can see. And all devices from here, and if you see here, the managed by co-managed or in tune or config MGR. So we talked earlier a little bit on, very little bit on, you know, some of the devices can be managed or co-managed. So just to you know, give you an idea here, a uh, little further, co-management is like a bridge, meaning you have a bridge where your devices are in between. Let's say. I want to draw here uh, and show you. Let's say one second. Yeah. So you have here a device, maybe a Windows 10 devices, or maybe these are you know maybe a couple of devices. So you have here in the left side as Intune, okay, and uh, sometimes uh, in the in the right side for you maybe in a SCCM or you call it as a Config MGR these days, right? So it, it as I said, it's a bridge, meaning these device can be managed some of the settings from Intune, some of the settings from SCCM, meaning you can actually take the advantage of both the products. Okay, even though you have the integration, so the integration called co-management. Okay, so you have to do something to do the co-management so that you can actually deploy here uh, some applications or some kind of compliance policies or conditional access from Active Directory, all of that stuff from Intune, and maybe a photo operating system deployment or maybe some of the applications deployment can be done from SCCM. So it's a bridge. So that path you can stick for some days. Later point you can either jump to uh, purely to the Intune or purely to the coma, uh, purely to the SCCM. You can do it, but uh, if you ask me ultimate path for the next four or five years, Microsoft is planning to move everything to the Intune. So it's a good time to learn so that you will be uh, learning early all that technology. And these days we can say at least a certain extent Microsoft Intune is fully matured so in the past it was not but after adding the windows autopilot and desktop analytic and co-management capabilities it's certain extent it is fully managed and certain extent it is fully matured this product okay Sorry, Adi. And, yeah uh, the co-management where is that actually um, set up is that set up within intune or is it set up within sccm yeah as i said we have to work on Azure Active Directory to do this core management as, as well as on a CCM and some configurations also to done from Intune side. Okay. Okay. So meaning, meaning here, I'm not just teaching you Microsoft Intune within this course. I must have to teach you here also the other technologies, especially here the CCM. Okay, I'm going to teach you here a CCM uh, a bit which whatever it is relevant for the co-management. Okay, so this is what we're going to learn within this course. Okay, and if you ask what are the features, I'm going to talk uh, in the next slide. So within this upcoming slide, we are going to have a look on what Intune can do, what are the product features, what other features that SCCM can do, or some other products that we talked. Let's say we talked about a bit on uh, desktop analytics, window, Windows Autopilot, 
So all of that we are going to talk in detail uh, what other products can do it. So that's where this slide will come into the picture for me. Okay. And uh, so far, any questions? Anybody? Either Kumar or Satish or Vinay, Rajesh or Sunil, Srikant? Uh, nobody. No, right? Okay, good. So, Srikant, you have any question? Yeah, Paddy, uh, I was a little bit uh, joint delayed. Uh, is anything I'm missing earlier? Uh, just it, briefly. Uh, uh, yeah, so I was actually recapped everything uh, another way. Uh, and also, I'm going to recap the same thing within this slide. So what I was trying to explain yeah. here is uh, the product called Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Okay. So this is uh, from 2019, if I'm correct, September or somewhere, the product has been rebranded. Okay. So what happens is within this, you have a different products altogether. Like uh, within this umbrella of this product, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, you basically have here Intune, Config MGR, uh, also co-management and desktop analytics, Windows Autopilot, uh, Azure Active Directory also, you need to know them a little bit. And also all of this stuff can be managed from a single console called Endpoint Manager Admin Center. So I'm going to explain all of these products, what they can do, and so that you will get an idea what Microsoft Endpoint Manager can do it for you. Okay. And post to that, we will deep dive into Intune. So I also talked about a little bit on a co-management. Co-management, it's like a bridge for you where uh, where you can jump to left side or right side because you're, you'll be in front of the bridge. Like if you want to use some of the features directly from Intune, you can use for that device. You want to join uh, and use some of the features from SCCM, you can use that specific features. Meaning in other way, if that device want to use purely cloud-based features from Microsoft Intune, you can do that. Or you want to take the advantage of on-premises SCCM, you can take the advantage of and can be managed from SCCM. So that's called co-management. So I want to show you if you if you missed out maybe a bit here, this is a console. This is how it looks like for you. Uh, you can see here managed by uh, the devices. It's just the SCCM uh, here. That's a config MGO we call. And this device, like INHYD PC01, is co-managed, meaning the same device will have, uh, can be managed from SCCM and also from Intune. So from the Intune, you can push the things like applications, configuration policies, all of that stuff. Also, uh, from SCCM also, you can do all of that stuff. Let's say operating system deployment, you can do that on that machine. Nobody stops. Okay. So if you see here, the devices are showing here managed by Intune, meaning these devices purely managed from Intune, not from a CCM or not from uh, as a uh, co-managed. Okay. You have an option to convert uh, from Intune to co-management. So meaning one or other day, you need to actually convert your, uh, you have maybe on-premises, then you would end up converting the devices to co-management. This is the highly demanding uh, skill as in date. And if you know, just Google for job post, all of that stuff, most of the people are looking for the co-management because they just wanted to manage this uh, pandemic situation. Co-management has the, it is addressing all the IT challenges. Uh, that's where Intune picked up and they also started co-management. I'm going to know, uh, uh, teach you this co-management. So to learn the co-management, I must have to teach you the Azure Active Directory also on a part of SCCM because as I said earlier, the devices also manage from SCCM, right? So I have to teach you that SCCM also. So a uh, part of uh, configuration, whatever we need to do it, I can, you know, uh, teach you. Okay, and also I told that Windows uh, Autopilot is a technology, it's not a product, it's not uh, part of Intune, but in Intune they are offering this technology. So you can use the Windows Autopilot technology 
within Microsoft Intune to build the machines. So I'm going to talk all of that stuff. What exactly autopilot? What is Intune? What is that? All that five different technologies. Okay, that's where this product is. That's where this slide I'm going to talk. Okay, so also Srikant, consider this is not a demo or not a marketing slide. This is real class. Okay, so if you have not captured as of now anything that's fine for me honestly with everyone because uh, now it's actually starting the class 1021 i would say <laughs> okay uh, so the thing is microsoft endpoint manager has different products as i said earlier five products the first product we can talk about microsoft intune other one is config mgr and also desktop analytics and co-management and Windows Autopilot. So we're going to learn all these five. Um, and out of that, config MGR, whatever it is relevant, we are going to learn. We're not going to uh, go installation, configuration of SCCM client, all of that stuff, because that itself a huge subject, config MGR. Okay. I can uh, take a separate session on a config MGR if you're really interested. But for now, whatever it is relevant with a combination of Intune, I'm going to take it. And these concepts are high-end concepts. So if you're looking for a basic configuration, basic learning, uh, come back for me, come back to me on uh, SCSIM training. So let me talk about what is Intune. So Microsoft Intune is 100% a cloud-based device management solution. So when I say device management, you can manage your mobile devices. It can be Android or iOS or Mac or Windows devices, purely cloud-based. Okay, and meaning you can push the application settings or applications can be pushed and you can manage you can like do wipe or reset reprovision or your company can you know buy the devices in a bulk and you can provision those devices uh, and facilitate for your end users so that they can use it let's say the user lost the device you can fully wipe the device and you can manage that device remotely also and uh, with this intune I would put it in other way. This statement might not be correct, but for certain extent, this is correct. Like today, system administrators, whatever they are performing, all that activities can be done from Microsoft Intune. Uh, meaning the sysadmin job is slowly moving to a single console called Microsoft Intune. Okay, so earlier we used to have an Intune portal, uh, which is part of Microsoft Azure uh, services. But this product has been rebranded with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and they also offer a separate console, which I have already shown to you. Okay, so within this uh, course, if time allows today, we are going to uh, enrollment process. All of that stuff also we will be doing because it's a real class. Okay, so you can do within this Microsoft Intune, uh, as I said, Android devices like enterprise operating system. There is a something called Android device administrator and also Android enterprise. So I assume that, you know, few, at least, you know, 90% of you, whoever join may not uh, know this fact that you might have already Android operating system phone, but that has a different versions, different uh, management capabilities, we would say. So the management capabilities, one is Android DA, we call it, uh, other one would be the enterprise. Okay, so micro, uh, Google focus on enterprise operating system. That's a future and that's where even the Microsoft also pushing because Google is pushing into that direction. I'm going to talk on that when we jump into Android section. Okay, and uh, coming back to the uh, group policies. Yes, you can do the uh, group policy settings also. You can manage with a different kind of uh, EDMX files, templates, all of that stuff. You can uh, push the uh, win32 applications when i say win32 the native applications when i say native maybe a .exe files or .msi or appx format or windows store based or apple store or android store applications your company might be acquired and you want to push it you can do that with the microsoft intune and uh, you can uh, 
do a lot with the Intune once we jump into the uh, actual course. But for now, I can say, you know, these are the things. And also for the compliance, there's a basic thing uh, which is needed. When I say compliance, certain standards your company uh, said, let's say the device must be BitLocker enabled and antivirus should be there. So you can measure the compliance. So if the device is not met that compliance, like BitLocker or antivirus is not found or some specific application, which is monitoring application is not available, then you consider that device as a non-complaint, meaning you would be actually blocking to access your corporate network or access your mails or access your OneDrive configuration, shape on portal or some other settings so that the end user have to go back and he has to fix it or he has to reach the helpless team uh, and get it done that uh, device to be you know, compliant. Okay, so we can push that kind of you know, complaint settings. So you can think about the powerful uh, device management options which are coming from Microsoft in tune. Okay, and uh, I would say that's it. And also, um, just to tell you, as I said earlier, the device must have a bit locker or some kind of antivirus. But can we push it that specific settings? Yes, you can do that um, settings automatically. Me automatically, you can push it. Let's say BitLocker can be pushed in this case, or maybe in this case, maybe applications can be pushed, or antivirus can be pushed, or even your company's certificates. So most of the cases, some of the devices needs to have a certain root certificate or some kind of you know certificate. Then only the device is trusted, right? Or maybe a Wi-Fi profiles can be pushed. So all of that can be done within Microsoft in June. I hope I gave at least 30 to 40 percent of overview on Microsoft in June. Now you know Microsoft in June. If anybody doesn't know or doesn't understand, please uh, raise your voice. You can you know ask me or if you have any doubt on Microsoft in June, uh, product understanding. As Srikant or Vinay, one more Vinay also joined and Sunil or anybody. Anybody does not understand? Yes, I, knew, uh, I, I get what you're um, saying. You see, when you said Android Enterprise and Android Device Management. Yeah, I'll take you that, actually. There is oh, a bigger, bigger, bigger right. area, that is. That itself takes close to 40 minutes, and it takes... The, uh, to explain to you, maybe it takes maybe 15 to 30 minutes. Lay oh. point to the deep drive, it takes three hours of uh, content, which is only dedicated on a Android enterprise. Okay, so I'm going to show you that if you're really interested uh, at this point of time. So I'll go you. So here you have this options like you know enterprise offering and d offering i'm gonna take this uh, when we jump into actual course okay, okay. brilliant okay Thank you. and wherever it is really needed to understand uh, the product i made it in a simple way the presentation okay and most of this course is purely on a practical okay the second product within this microsoft endpoint manager is config mgr so earlier we used to call as sccm because why you we used to call as ccm can anybody tell if they remember the name we used to call as sccm so the cm stands here config mgr okay system center. And, yeah this is called system center so there's a family called system center which has the operations manager that's just com and also orchestrator dbm a lot of other products six to seven different products so now uh, this product config mgr is you know hard hard broken with system center config uh, system center pro product family and joined back to this product called microsoft endpoint manager okay so that's where um, that's where we are actually lending everything on this product. 
second yeah so SCCM uh, I hope if anybody is completely new to SCCM you can speak up uh, if not I'll give you in a high level so SCCM today it's a purely mature product SCCM is a purely mature product and Microsoft what they're trying to do is they are trying to move the product uh, to take it to in tune direction that's where Microsoft recently announced uh, a, a feature called cloud attach so what happens is when you attach to a cloud uh, all the devices get uploaded to a CC, uh, from SCCM to Microsoft endpoint manager admin center so you can manage directly from engine portal or endpoint manager admin center portal in this case. Okay, that's a high level, but let's talk low level. So what exactly is CCM uh, earlier? Uh, now what it is uh, config MGR, I already explained. So we used to call now, we have to call as EME, that is Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and CM, that's a MECM. Okay, we, we have to call as MECM, or we can call as you know CM that's okay or config MGR so this is basically used for on-premises solution where you can manage your desktops and servers I use a word called here servers if you remember earlier I never used here a server meaning uh, Intune is not going to support for server management meaning uh, Intune is not fully replacement for your SCCM at this point of time and I have actually made a different slide uh, on a pros and cons on SCCM and Intune where unsupported features of Intune also I mentioned there I'm gonna talk that's why I didn't talk about the server uh, or the not supported feature okay so you can manage SC with the SCCM desktops and servers uh, with your flexibility even laptops and over the internet also you can manage it. and you also have something called cloud management gateway which is almost replacement of your bit of Intune settings okay cloud management gateway uh, but it's not 100% replacement I would say because uh, other capabilities uh, powerful capabilities which are only coming from Intune integration okay and uh, it's a cloud-based integration you can do it with Intune and then we call it as the co-management when you you know integrate uh, you can make it as a co-management and the config MGR also can do the ATP settings and uh, it can integrate with your uh, Active Directory as well as your Azure Active Directory and uh, or you can do the software uh, push the software applications and software updates operating system deployment can be done with SCCM and also you can measure some kind of the compliance and you can query you can get the inventory reports and uh, CM pivot you can use so that you get the real-time data also you get the extensive reports with the config MGR not with Intune okay and uh, let's jump into the other product um, here that's the co-management so it's a it technology as I said I have already extensively talked on this it's like a bridge so you can connect your devices I mean the same device can be managed with a CCM as well as with Intune in other way on the same device you will have a two agents so two agents so one agent can be from a CCM other agent from Intune so whatever the things you want to push it you can push from Intune whatever the things you want to push it from SCCM you can push it to the same device so single uh, machine reports to two places or can be managed from two places okay uh, so this is called a bridge kind of thing and we we talked about that and uh, um, we are gonna do on this later point so meaning the course uh, have structured in this way so what I'll do is actually I'm gonna talk everything on a uh, cloud based initially slowly uh, I'll take it all the features within the cloud then I'll jump into the uh, SCCM okay if we do the integration with the co-manager whatever it is needed for the co-management and then we will uh, have some of the devices here and then we would actually uh, attach cloud attach co-management all of that stuff then you can actually manage directly from the engine portal or the endpoint manager admin center portal which i have already shown in the portal how it looks like even you can you can check the how it looks like from a manage all of that stuff 
right so other one would be the desktop analytics uh, here the desktop analytics is a the new thing uh, here it's a purely cloud based solution again so what it does is it actually gives you a clear idea on what applications are compatible for your latest builds or might go wrong okay so what they have done is uh, I, you know let me uh, explain in a blaming way okay nobody explains my way but simple so what they have done is initially they released some XYZ product by Microsoft what they said is you just uh, use this product for free uh, and everybody started using from a different companies let's say this is maybe a, a company maybe IBM or this might be Microsoft this might be from a company called uh, manufacturing company so different uh, business domains right they used and what Microsoft has done is they created a database and their applications whatever their applications are there how they are actually working the application application compatibility and issues crashing points performance all of that they have captured against to the Windows builds and they send this data to Microsoft so once they have the data they build a product called desktop analytics so what it does now so with this desktop analytics let's say you might have here a product Windows uh, 1909 build here you might have maybe uh, 1809 build or maybe somebody has 20H so but a common application maybe office is a common application everywhere Adobe is a common application or maybe somebody has maybe here Adobe uh, specific maybe a designing or Photoshop kind of you know different applications so what they have done is if that application causing some performance issues or some crashing against to the some bills they know it now so they will actually report back to end, endpoint uh, manager uh, in the console with the desktop analytics and they say that hey this application let's say application 1 application 2 are not compatible with 1809 builds or maybe ABC uh, applications are compatible so maybe with the 20H it's not compatible by these applications like that they can build a dynamically uh, for you a set of devices okay so now let's let me go back and tell you you know how in the how we used to do it in the past when I say past so let's say you have um, you have now a CCM you might be a CCM engineer now and you have a uh, different operating system so what do you do you capture every time uh, as a machine uh, and then you create a image out of it and you deploy that image to uh, different machines let's say the current build is 20h so you used to build okay or maybe you are deploying as a servicing maybe you can use as a servicing either any of the options so either you do the service or you do the operating system deployment uh, or to migrate it are you 100 percent sure that all the applications are compatible definitely know for that before you actually deploy that specific build let's say in this case maybe a 20 h2 what you're doing is uh, for 20 h2 here you're actually uh, you're making uh, here the application to be tested actually these applications are working on here by some other team and after that you are actually releasing these builds so it's a huge time taking and cost is involved and after all of that also you're not sure uh, to actually send it to a pilot machines so when you say pilot you yourself decided by taking some XYZ machines as a pilot but 100% that's not really a great machines because uh, maybe some uh, a unique users might be there they might be using a XYZ applications that may be a one percentage of the applications or two percent of the applications so we never know those users are the real users that might not work after you picking up uh, on your own maybe from an IT team or maybe a specific domain people as the first pilot machines right so that's not real pilot you yourself identified manually but how about giving you automated pilot devices where that pilot is a, a real worthy pilot so that's what 
actually desktop analytic tool does so it gives you a automated pilot devices collection groups so that you can actually deploy it so that's the advantage of the desktop analytics and it also tells you what applications might work might not work so another way if anybody knows maybe application compatibility toolkit or act in the past so very similar thing okay it does the application specific thing and it's purely now cloud based and you can manage that directly from the endpoint manager admin center okay and uh, i hope you know i made it very clear for desktop analytics especially this specific tool right uh, just you know give you so it gives you the power uh, powerful cloud based insights of your desktop analytics so that you can keep your devices to current build version that's the ultimate goal with the desktop analytics okay it also gives you dynamically the uh, pilot devices collection or the group so that you can luckily you can use them okay that's the uh, two bullet points i would say for desktop analytics let's jump into windows autopilot so as i said earlier uh, most of the people they think that uh, Autopilot is actually an Intune technology. No, it's not the case. Okay, it's a Windows 10, uh, Win 10 technology. Okay, so anybody can use uh, Windows 10 Autopilot technology. Meaning, let's say I have some, I have customized maybe with my pen drive all of the stuff that actually goes and communicate with Intune. Instead of that, you know, if I just put that uh, redirection to my pen drive. The autopilot can be successful meaning i can fully isolate into if really wanted meaning uh, it's not just the intune today some of the products also supports uh, the especially from the vmware side uh, workstation all of that uh, products also supports so that's why i said autopilot is a, a new technology that can integrate with your intune so within microsoft intune it's a ready-made available features are you have so there are different profiles that needs to be cre created like uh, within this course uh, maybe uh, a few words like a demo kind of thing i wanted to talk here so we're gonna do all the autopilot configurations all the demos not the just the one so you have actually two only two options but two becomes as multiple options like the first option would be the user driven meaning user have to enter his username and password do some of the uh, clicks by using his mouse that's called user driven other one would be the fully automated option so that we are going to do it again within the user driven oh, we will actually do with some kind of you know uh, pre-provisioning we call it or white law we call it and also kiosk builds all of that stuff we are going to do it with the windows autopilot and these things cannot be done on your virtual machines uh, only one user driven setting can be done on a hyper v or your vmware but, but for this you need real devices real devices actually so i'm going to provide you uh, i mean i'm going to do it on a real uh, devices and I'm going to show you that also so that you're going to uh, not missing anything even a single click okay for the autopilot and also this can be integrated with SCCM also so I'm going to show you that how to do that and how to do the customization and also autopilot can be actually uh, useful for the enterprise companies let's say you go back to Dell or maybe Lenovo saying that you know when you place maybe when you are placing hundred machines or thousand machines for your next hardware refresh cycle, you can ask them to you know hey you provision my autopilot profile uh, in my Intune or my in Azure Active Directory. Then once they provide uh, or provision that settings, uh, all we have to do is user will just start the machine and it gets joined into on premises active directory also to azure ad and it also will have the record all the applications automatically available and that way you can actually replace the operating system deployment and customizing that image and deploying applications all of that stuff can be in a fully uh, eliminated the manual hours and efforts and the cost um, because it's the job was taken care by your hardware vendor okay all you have to do is you have to know uh, make it that profiles are available so that end user 
can simply start the machine that's it when he log in all the applications will be available you deploy your office or maybe AutoCAD or whatever the applications you have all of them will be deployed and it will be readily usable state for the end user and uh, you don't need to do any further customizations so that's the uh, autopilot and this is again a uh, hot uh, booming so other two things like you know as i said co-management and autopilot is the most on demanding skills that needs everyone these days so all of these five different settings can be managed directly from a console called endpoint manager admin center i can see that at least two guys has joined uh, uh, recently and i just wanted to show them uh, the admin console so this is the console from this is where you can manage everything so if i show you desktop analytics this is what the desktop analytic and a second it's loading so this is how it looks like it automatically creates your pilot groups all of that stuff here and these settings will be uh, written back to your SCCM automatically so at the end the deployment would happen from your SCCM but identifying the bottleneck issues and the devices uh, pilot all of that would be taken care of by desktop analytics as of date okay and uh, the devices we can we will be you now actually working with windows devices ios and ipad devices also and mac and android uh, devices we are going to work and each of them will have a lot of other settings so we don't just jump into uh, android and then jump into half of them and then jump into maybe ios no we will take each of the platform and we will become as a master and then we'll move to other okay and also we will work on the uh, strategy of how we have to go in a project based approach i'm going to show you that in a minute but this is what the console this is where you're going to do you can you know deploy the applications you can monitor them you can uh, set the configurations you can protect your data let's say there is an end user who owns his own device meaning bring your own device we call it and that device uh, might have maybe his gmail id was configured and also the outlook with it which is official uh, office communication email id in that case he can do the copy paste you want to you know restrict that taking a photo uh, uh, screenshots photocopies all of that can be not restricted and also you can make the configuration of the uh, that outlook automatically configure on on the end user settings so that he just have to you know tap the icon that's it he can you know check the email configurations so all of that stuff i know we are going to do exciting things within this course and uh, uh, that's it i would say uh, uh from the introduction side and now if you are a bit of uh, i mean i'm opening for the uh, questions Maybe let, let's take the questions if anybody has on any of these five points or five bullet points a few questions um that's okay otherwise i'm gonna put uh, a different way of teaching when you mention about um will be you'd be using a device for autopilot could we also connect our devices and practice alongside Please, happily happily okay. if you have the device and you want to use it um i'm really en encouraged that you can you know do it and you can share the experience at the same time okay i'll get a device ready for next week another laptop yeah great but make sure that that should have a tpm chip that's one uh, simple pre-requirement it should have what chip uh, tpm tpm security oh yeah. tpm security yeah tpm oh. trusted platform basically yeah okay so any anybody else has any questions on now uh, learning port you know what are we going to learn and uh, what are these products all of that stuff no okay let me uh, make a lot of uh, confusions that you might have 
Uh, somebody has a question here. Uh, what about mobile content management? Yeah, app protection policies. We're going to learn, Karthik. So if you have anything else, you can share. If not, I'll take that as an answer. Now I'm going to make it easy for you. Okay, really easy for you. What to what to learn? Or maybe you join to a company. Let's let's take in this way. You might be joined to a specific company. Now, how you're gonna actually do the uh, decisions? Okay, how you're gonna take as or take decisions? Let's say, uh, what is what is right? Either should I go with uh, cloud only? with just the Intune or maybe a on-premise? If so, you know, what are the requirements? Or maybe a combination. I did already explain, but just, you know, put it here so uh, in a slide so that it makes easy for anybody to understand. So choose if you're, uh, if you're trying to, you know, provision devices constantly, okay, then go for the Windows Auto Pilot. Don't go for the operating system deployment, okay? Because that makes easy because uh, you no need to invest a lot on your uh, resources and the time uh, to prepare that device, okay? And uh, you have, uh, if, you, if you add the rules and the control settings, like a user-specific applications to be deployed, a user-based uh, settings you want to configure or device specific settings then just go for Intune okay don't go for um, SCCM okay because uh, in this course I'm going to teach you everything for, from the Intune to on premises right so but when you when you go back to your job you might have only just the cloud only that's only Intune or you might have uh, both or maybe you're just planning to move to uh, on-prem to cloud. So you might be in any, any situation, but I'm gonna teach you all that situations. But if you want to you know self-justify uh, what is that, you're gonna uh, take a decision, a path, then this slide is very useful for you. Okay, so if you're, not, if you're already currently using on SCCM and you're deploying your applications, uh, but you wanna uh, secure those applications, for accessing for the end users with the help of conditional access. So I I am using here a vertical conditional access. I haven't explained I haven't explained here maybe uh, conditional access. Let's say uh, let me take this vocabulary word uh, and explain to you what is conditional access. So a conditional access is a word from Azure Active Directory. Simple. Okay. So this word is coming from Azure Active Directory. Are we going to learn this? Yes, we are going to learn this. Are we going to work with this extensively? Yes, we are going to work. Uh, is it part of the course? Yes, it's going to be part of the course. But are you going to do it in the uh, real production? Uh, I would say may or may not because this is actual responsible by not assistant team. It is responsible by Active Directory guys, this conditional access. So let me explain what is conditional access now. Uh, let's say there's a device so if the device is, uh, let's take a user first, okay? If a user is in an office network and he is trying to uh, access maybe some portal within office network, then it just, uh, it doesn't ask for the username and password, okay? It might be you know, opening properly or might be asking username and password only, either case one or case two. But if the same user coming from his home PC, okay, or some other device, then, Apart from the user ID password, it has to verify uh, maybe a multi-factor authentication to secure. After uh, verifying multi-factor authentication, if anybody doesn't know what is multi-factor authentication, it is a second level of uh, authentication just to you know validate who whom you you are, meaning just to you know proving yourself, like um, like getting a code on your mobile phone or getting a phone call so that um, you can approve that logon kind of thing okay so when you're trying to access from your home it should you know prompt this okay uh, so this is a one condition okay i would say uh, so you can put that kind of you know conditions with the help of conditional access policies so there's a lot uh, can be created within the conditional access policies so you can do that so uh, 
this is one option other option maybe if the user trying to access from uh, a region based because if you look at we love the european union policies the content must be uh, the data must be metadata should be on european data centers so if if the user is coming from maybe australia or from somewhere else in canada then we have to stop it so that can be you no know, achieved with the help of conditional access even though is a genuine user we have a policy we have a policy that data shouldn't come so we can apply that kind of you know, conditional policies or let's apply the real policy uh, with respect to the engine we talked about the in the previous lectures about the uh, in tune uh, within this here complaints as a one word right so the device is not met maybe your bit locker not not configured or antivirus is not configured so we treat that as a non-compliant if that's the case then we can say con with the conditional access we can stop uh, accessing some other applications which are secure application maybe your portals or your websites or maybe accessing some server all that can be restricted okay with the conditional access so that's the uh, meaning of conditional access um, i can explain so now let's apply how that is going to used here so if you want to use that kind of you know conditional access scenarios uh, on your on premises then you must have to jump into co-management meaning you have a ccm already so the devices are already managed but you want to apply you want to take the advantage of co-management then you'll jump into conditional access okay now if you're currently using already a ccm and you're responsible for Windows 10 devices to up to date with the uh, with the servicing plan. Uh, does anybody doesn't know Windows servicing option? I have already used more than four or five times. Anybody? Or can I take it as everybody knows? Windows servicing option, you said yes what about it uh, okay so windows servicing is to maintain the uh, machines to up to date with the current build okay let's say what's your windows version so in my case if i just go back here winver uh, i think it's uh 2004 but microsoft already released after 2004 build 20h right so we have to upgrade to 20 h build so this is the ongoing activity every microsoft has a servicing channels so they follow 18 month half yearly uh, different channel servicing channel so we just have to you know follow that servicing channel to keep our windows 10 devices to up to date okay so to do that either earlier we used to do the windows uh, upgrade okay that's actually part of uh, SCCM you can do that I'm going to show you that so this is my SCCM console okay so you have here servicing options within this let's say Windows 10 servicing so you have a service business plans so if I just go back here I have devices on 1809 some of them are uh, different so uh, yeah it's a semi-annual and the annual uh, long term so these are the three different uh, channels so if a windows 10 is uh, attached to this channel so you have to upgrade long term or maybe semi-annual or annual like that so here the build is on 1809 devices i have here so this machine should be you know, upgraded to the latest that's what it actually talks so you can actually create from a ccm here the service plans okay and once you created that service plans you keep your devices to up to date with the help of SCCM. Okay, so this can be done from SCCM also, also from Intune also. So I'm gonna show you from Intune definitely, but just to you know, give you what is servicing is, that's what it means. So if you want to keep the devices to up to date, not I'm not talking about the patching, I'm talking about the Windows builds, just to you know, cl clearly clarify to everyone, Windows builds to up to date, then go for windows desktop analytics okay and uh, with without any additional cost actually this is you don't need to pay anything but you need to have as your subscription 
uh, and that's not going to charge you anything again just to explain to you you need to have uh, as your subscription but it's not going to charge okay uh, and also if you want to you know, manage the mobile devices or application management mobile uh, specific operating system specific some kind of you know settings that are not part of your uh, Intune then you want to do some kind of a customization then you have to you know, go for Intune definitely. So these are the uh, a kind of a you know, decision uh, information. Always you can you know uh, come back and think whether I'm gonna do in this direction or not. So just to you know consolidate it, what we learned so far uh, with these five bullet points. When do you go for cloud? So you will go for a cloud that is only Intune method. If the data is completely stored in Microsoft Azure platform and uh, you don't have any data centers, you don't have any servers that to manage, then a good approach would be go for MDM with the help of Microsoft Intune. Okay. And if you have on premises already existence on your company, then it's better you, you know, go with uh, a CCM only okay and you don't have any cloud base then just go to the system but if you want to use some of the features on a cloud then you might have to you know go even for the co-management or just the on-premises only but i don't want to go for a uh, cloud but i wanted to give my machines to get the content over the internet let's say the users are working from home uh, my on-premises users during this pandemic i wanted to uh, configured I wanted to make the devices to be complained and push the patches operating system and also applications inventory all of that stuff then with SCCM also you can do it with the cloud management gateway you can do that stuff but coming back to the powerful uh, options that you have as a combination most of the companies goes in a co-management so that's the approach where you want to go with the cloud as well as on premises, then you can do it. So I wanted to give you here one clarity. You might be thinking in this way. So don't think in that way. So that is, if you're thinking all of devices are co-managed, no, you can define this set of devices only can be co-managed. Okay, and these devices just wanted to manage with SCCM or maybe some devices just manage with Intune. You can do that with a single console. That is the flexibility. I hope you might, you know, understood some of them as every device. Do I want to go for a co-management? No. Okay, you have an option. Choose only what devices want to go for co-management. Only set up a few devices because of the business demand. You want to manage from Intune as well as from SCCM some of them only from sccm i don't want to i don't want to manage them let's say you have your uh, desktops which are lying on your on premises network why do we have to you know attach to uh, intune you can manage it okay uh, like that you might have some your own business requirement so you it you can play mix and match right okay now i would like to uh say that we have completed successfully one hour time how did you feel actually because this is a kind of a partially demo a little bit and partial uh, learning i wanted to take everyone's opinion here to continue further to only in tune so uh, in the next few minutes we're going to talk about engine capabilities deep drive what engine can do and how you can get it and also where you can get the trial so that you can also practice and some of the features that are not going to support her by intune all of that stuff i'm going to talk so before we jump into it because i haven't talked anything on really on a on a, a portal i'm not going to do it that um, uh, in this way uh, only slides i'm not going to do this after once we learn what is intune capabilities we're not going to do this we will be doing everything on a portal we just wanted to take everyone's opinion as of now how did you felt uh, kumar here or easy um yeah it's um it's been quite informative so you know um, in the little hour we've spent learning this i've already um 
have picked up some knowledge and you know the differentiator between all the different um services within endpoint manager i have a better understanding now which previously i didn't so it's been good so far so it'll be good to see like we're learning the theory it'll be good to see how uh the practical side of things yeah how that goes. but yes uh, definitely very good yeah sure. and uh Srikant? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I also learned a few things uh, from you uh, because I'm new to this in tunes, uh, so now it's okay. Going further, we can know uh, like how we would like to know. As of now, it's okay. everything fine. Okay, so my style of uh, explaining is at the end, I would actually take the feedback of everyone. So I don't want any one of you go with the questions from this sessions either you know it's a demo or it may be a, a real class i want i wanted to you know in i will i will be asking insisting to explain uh any of the questions at the end also okay so you have any questions by anyone okay please vinay you have any question no i'm good uh, i'm new to new in tune and uh, just trying to understand its background then uh, if we jump into the demo then uh, we can explore more uh, at this moment uh, uh, i i could feel like it is a, a theoretical uh, uh, class yeah. so once we uh, jump into the demo then uh, probably it will be more interesting and uh, more uh, opportunity to explore into this uh, intune product Thank you, uh, and I'm going to actually take it by 11.30 to the portal, <laughs> I promise. Okay, Kartik? Hold on, sorry, did you say by 11.30? So what I time mean, you know, I, I, another 30 minutes for you. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, don't worry, 20 oh, minutes. Yes, yes, there were different time zones, I just remembered. Yeah, yeah. And another 30 minutes, I'm sorry. I used 20 you know, minutes, 20 minutes, just 20 minutes, 20, I guess. Yeah, 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to take it to the portal, don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Kat uh, Kranti or Sunil, a Sri a Sri Ramadas. After a long time, man, how are you? Good evening for you. I'm sorry, too early for you. I think it's two a.m. or one a.m. There. Yeah, it's, it's not too early. It's uh ten thirty p.m. It's fine. Uh, ten thirty. Okay. Yeah, uh, so far it's good. Now, uh, yeah, uh, let's go deep into the uh, main intro uh, demo uh, stuff. That will be more interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, we all are uh, from IT background, and uh, we know a little bit about Windows and uh, SSEM products. So it is good to go into Intune so that uh, we can explore the product. That is that. Uh, that is what I feel. I believe uh, whoever is trying to learn Intune, uh, they must be aware of uh, some uh, concepts uh, into Azure as well, right? So the cloud platform. So. Oh, probably I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk on that also uh, okay. maybe in another 20 minutes plus uh, how this is gonna fit all of that stuff okay okay all right we'll wait for that then thanks okay thank you um, I'll just continue with uh, the capabilities of Microsoft Intune thank you so here with the Microsoft Intune capabilities so as we talked extensively already, you might have already have some understanding now by this time, if you're quite new to Microsoft Intune. So it's a cloud-based, uh, it's a cloud-based service, I would say. It's not a server, it's a service. Meaning, if something goes wrong, Microsoft is responsible, not, not by us. Okay, and you don't need to have anything on your on-premises network. That's how the cloud is managed, or uh, Microsoft Intune, okay? And initially, this Microsoft Intune is actually focused on uh, device management, like mobile devices, not for the um, not for Windows or other stuff. It's it's actually created to focus on mobile devices. That's why today also you can manage most of the things on your mobile devices uh, with with the help of Microsoft Intune. Okay, so you can control your organization devices. Uh, that are using within your company, mobile devices like mobile phones, tablets, laptops, all of that can be controlled with the help of Intune. So if anybody is quite new to the uh, enterprise 
experience we uh, we as a company or, or in enterprise companies we not only buy the windows devices or maybe a mac devices or a laptops we also buy the mobile devices and we give it them for the uh, directors or maybe to the end users whoever uh, based on their uh, company's requirement let's say a company is there they just wanted to decided to go for apple devices what happens is we go to the apple purchasing program and we buy it there and we give it to the end users so when we give it to the end users here the options are open now as a company you have to decide do we want to install or allow apple specific applications there also or we we wanted to block all of them and just enable only company specific applications or company approved applications uh, and same same thing goes to android users so if you have an android phone maybe it, it might be any make you must have a youtube right you can't uninstall that youtube but when you buy it from uh, apple purchasing uh, sorry the uh, google specific operating system or mobile devices like uh, let's say samsung device maybe most of the companies go for samsung galaxy specific so let's say your company decided galaxy specific devices and it is offering for end users so those users do not have a youtube it just chrome and your Apple browser whatever it is and also your applications they cannot configure they cannot configure gmail or any other applications you can do it in a such a way so that's a power uh, when we talk about the mobile device management you can do it and we are going to do that so there are you know total four different methods that can be uh, allowed that's called you know uh, bring your own devices just the one method that you know maybe now but there is something called corporate owned uh, device with a user uh, options whether we want to allow or not allow like that okay we are going to talk on that deep drive when we go to the android device management okay so i think it would be tomorrow's session and today uh, mostly we will be working on windows if i'm correct if time allows we will jump there also okay so uh, now you can isolate the data within that um, device as we talked uh, you know one of the capabilities would be let's say if this is mobile device you can actually make a isolation within the device so this is maybe a uh, corporate owned data and this will be this section will be even encrypted and this section would be your personal device configuration let's say you might have youtube you might have here gmail you can send all of that but anything the data cannot be shared here you can do that thing so that's what uh, the isolation you can do it okay we talked about that and we're going to do that also in the upcoming demos and uh, you can welcome the personal devices you can set the configuration not to allow or allow all of that stuff okay and you can configure some rules to uh, automatic configurations to happen on personal devices or maybe company owned devices you can do uh, like you know let's say if the user is uh, moving from one plant to another plant with his mobile device so what happens so if the user goes there uh, there might be there might be uh, wi-fi has to be automatically connected so that he can enjoy the Wi-Fi benefits or the local uh, intranet applications. So for that, when the device moves to that specific plant, automatic Wi-Fi should be configured. Okay, that can be done. Automatic configurations can be done by deploying the applications, user-specific applications we can deploy from Google Store, Google Play Store, or maybe iOS App Store. You can deploy the applications for your end users automatically. And also you can make your own Google Play Store let's say your company uh, bought maybe 10 applications so the 10 applications like a go to meeting in this case or maybe um, some other uh, SaaS based applications salesforce all of that stuff so they just simply go there and they simply install that application from the play store or maybe ios store app store uh, that would be company created link an isolated environment and they simply go there and if they have a license 
that is granted for the, that end user it will be visible and they can simply install or we can mandate we can make it as a mandate also we can push that application okay that's what it says and you can protect the data as we talked and um, we can make the devices to complaint we talked about that so that we can achieve the security requirements and you can get the inventory of that device specific information uh, and uh, to be frank with you uh, if you are from a CCM background, a limited inventory was not extensive inf information, but that is what uh, enough I think so uh, for the inventory point of view. You don't need to uh, get what is configured uh, from a identity programs or maybe some registry key inventory, all of that stuff. You don't need it actually when you're trying to manage from cloud based. So it's a limited, but that's sufficient, I would say. And you can stop the machines or the devices that are jailbroken. That's a rooted devices can be blocked. All of that stuff uh, can be configured automatically for you. You can push the certificates. You can get the reports. Also, what devices are compliant, what devices are not compliant. And also, if the user left uh, the organization, you can wipe only that section let's say we said earlier this user using bring your own device with his gmail id here and his personal stuff here but within this stuff maybe we earlier pushed outlook and we also have our salesforce applications all of that stuff here so once the user is no more working with us we can simply uh, wipe only this isolated data not his personal data we can do that or if the device itself lost with the corporate owned meaning all the data is corporate owned then simply wipe this entire device or you can reprovision this device for one more time for another user so all of that capabilities can be done and we're going to do all of this stuff uh, sorry yeah we are going to do all of this stuff also okay so kind of the continuation you can assign mobile applications as i said uh, based on your uh, users groups so we're going to learn the ad azure ad i'm going to talk on as when asked earlier we are going to touch azure ad also a little bit uh, like you know you can make it groups uh, let's say maybe all office 365 users so that office 365 can be pushed to these groups or maybe a set of devices okay And also, uh, you can push some kind of you know, settings, application configuration settings. So these are the app protection uh, policies, like maybe a specific settings should be applied uh, to automatically configure so that the user no need to configure. Uh, in that case, you can actually do it. And as you need specific, we're gonna talk. Uh, so, you can you know copy paste the data it can be isolated as we talked here a personal uh, profile to here the company profile shouldn't copy paste all of that stuff can be done uh, photo stop all of that stuff uh, can be you know stopped you can create uh, enrollment automatic enrollment so in sccm if you're coming from a sccm background we used to call SSM client agent to be deployed manually or push group policies log on script or soup based all of that stuff right so with Intune now we call it as an enrollment so not the agent installation we say enrollment it's a word that you need to remember enrolling so when you say en so when you say enrollment uh, you're actually uh, making the device to be part of your organization so that the device can be managed from your organization in tune or endpoint manager portal fully so that's called uh, enrollment options i'm going to talk on that uh, very extensively on different uh, platforms not just the windows we're going to do on ios as well as the uh, google specific operating systems okay so that's the capabilities um that's good. Uh, now we have another 10 more minutes to discuss a little bit uh, on a different thing. So if anybody has any questions on Intune uh, capabilities, they can ask. So what I've done is I initially started uh, 
initially I started what is actually Microsoft Endpoint Manager and how it was called. So if somebody is calling us here, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, meaning MEM they call, also sometimes if they are re referring to MECM, meaning we should understand it's not uh, now anymore SECM because SC was referring from system center, now it is Endpoint Manager. Okay, so we called them. Some other people, they wanted to go for a long and they say they also add this one more M in between, so MEMCM. So either you call it anyway, it's the same. We talked about this and also uh, here in tune, a uh, so few people also called like this also, I'm sorry, but they call in this way also. We talked on these, the naming, all of that stuff. After that, we also talked about the products that are part of Microsoft Endpoint Manager here. Uh, and then we talked about, once we talked about all these uh, products, I gave a little bit of information on all of these products uh, with another slide here, deep drive with the features and options that we have within Microsoft Endpoint Manager, right? Like Intune, Config Engineer, Desktop Analytics, Co-Management, and Windows Auto Wallet. Post to that, I did talk about, you know, if you have any confusion, you can actually decide what to choose, what is best for your uh, business, like either cloud or on-premises or a combination. And also, once we have decided all of that stuff, now it's time for me to actually take it to cloud only. So when I say cloud only, uh, as I said, beginning of the the training, we are gonna deep drive in a two methods. Microsoft Intune, I'm gonna teach you in a two methods. One is cloud only. So just the cloud sp uh, specific, okay? And the other one would be the with the on-premises, with the co-management, all of that advanced stuff, okay? So once we finish this, we will jump here. Okay, so that that actually completes the entire course. So I'm gonna uh, test within this cloud different options also, like Windows Enrollment, uh, Autopilot. Also, we're gonna here also Autopilot comes as a combination, like a hybrid AD join, and also Android devices and iOS devices, Windows devices, enrollment. I use a word called enrollment, right? So that's what we're gonna learn and. Uh, here uh, just to give you here one more uh, so post to that what we have done is here intune capabilities we talked we spoken and you all know now what is uh, intune capabilities right so let me take it to the next level of uh, the course training is this clear for everyone Yes, there was a slide that you had up with all the different apps, Microsoft Store for Business. Yes, I'm going to talk on that. So okay. it's like you you buy uh, you buy the devices. You can see now we're going to talk about three things: Apple, Windows, again from Microsoft, and Google Play Store. So three of these companies have their own. Uh, stores so you everybody knows that play store is again from a google meaning i can go and buy something and then uh, i can make that to available for my end users right similarly from microsoft also they also have uh, microsoft store for business so you can do uh, that stuff basically uh, like uh, you can buy the windows licenses some applications uh, Surface Pro devices or any of the, that uh, things can be you know, bought it directly from here there and that also can be managed I want to show you that also um, a later point here within this uh, Enrollment options and the configuration that comes up. I'm going to you know, show that So in fact, we're going to sign up for so for business and do all of that stuff when it comes to the application management also Okay and uh, any other questions anybody has so this slide is i have not talked so ignore it uh, ignore it this slide so i talked only till this till here capabilities that's it if everybody is clear 
then we will uh, jump into the how to get the trial uh, stuff practically and then we slowly jump into the uh, windows enrollment sections is it okay for everyone okay cut uh, kranti right kranti has a question publishing applications to mobile devices means that does not require mobile device users authentication like general biometric approval on iphone good question so what happens is uh, it depends it depends you know how do you want to you know push it you want to make it as a mandatory then it just available if the device is owned by your company so application has a license that means you bought the license you can deploy it, that application right so that i hope that uh, clears your question kanti okay good so we are going to actually deep dive uh, kanti on that part uh, what type of devices you might know only a single device as of now but the same device will convert into four different types i'm going to show you that physically it is a one device but it can be converted it can be acted as a four different devices i'm going to show you that okay guys um enough um so i wanted to take it here um device management so earlier when microsoft intune was actually started uh, they actually have a portal called device management.microsoft.com today also it works on that portal on that path so let me show you here so if i just go here also this will redirect to endpoint endpoint.microsoft.com so meaning this specific url so this device management.microsoft.com is the first url when microsoft released microsoft intune and uh, that time during that time it was never been part of microsoft azure services when they initially released okay later point what they have done is they merged with microsoft intune uh, with azure services so meaning uh, if i just go to uh, portal.azure.com okay meaning i might have some some kind of a subscription all of that so here i used to search here in tune and then i used to get here the console okay but what happened is they have taken out they said hey we have moved out to a static url to this so this endpoint manager will be gonna uh, give a lot of jobs or a lot of uh, skills that are required for help desk and system admins uh, in future that's why they wanted to you know make it as a dedicated url endpoint.microsoft.com so that's nothing but this url okay so if i go back here this is a url okay enough we know now uh, how to open but how do we get the access how do we get the trial okay before we jump into the intune so i just wanted to show you um, intune licensing i wanted to talk here uh, a bit so if i just go to uh, microsoft documentation okay so it's like uh, i would say microsoft intune think that it's like a, an ice cream okay you see uh, the same ice cream it's an ice cream <laughs> definitely it's a cool thing uh, melty thing tasty but you have a flavor like maybe strawberry or vanilla kind of different flavors similarly now when we are going back to cloud you have the license mix and match you can play you can bundle that license xyz license part of different licenses programming different license programs earlier if you want to buy windows 10 we just buy windows license in, in a open license or maybe volume license or enterprise licensing three different methods we used to buy right but it's the one license but here with the intune since it's a cloud-based service as i said right so this service can be utilized if you have any of these licenses so i wanted to tell you that in micros in uh, us and europe a lot of schools uh, literally schools and colleges so uh, literally colleges schools uses microsoft engine lot so lot let's say if you you know maybe colleges of 10 uh in use or in europe at least eight of them will go for microsoft intune uh 
and they offer for their students that's how it is much flexible for the uh, management side okay and they have different licensing for them that's called microsoft intune for education okay and uh, they also have uh, intune is part of i'm saying as a part of e36 uh, office uh, microsoft 365 e3 and e5 so if you're quite new for what is microsoft 365 e3 e5 it also combination of intune and office ms office license and windows 10 license all of that stuff okay so here different things you have different licensing options but at the end what we wanted is we wanted intune license should be available uh, for that user meaning some of the features might not work like a conditional access might not work if you do not have a premium license of azure active directory if you remember i was very clearly said that it's not that you are going to use or you are not going to manage the conditional access in a real world it will be by ad team why i use that word because conditional access is part of active directory azure active directory it's not part of actually uh, intune okay it's a capability from uh, or the feature coming from azure active directory so that has a different licensing model so if that licensing model meets that requirement intune can um, use that that option that's how it's going to work okay so these all are the licenses options that you have i hope everybody can see so but from the client side how it looks like is if i i don't know uh, if i have any of the user let's see i have a single user here so i wanted to show you here uh, for the this specific user if you want to assign a license example so i get a lot of other options if you see here i get a lot of other options out of that one single checkbox which is talking about intune so all i have to do is i have to go to the user properties and see whether i have a microsoft intune license that's it either if i either if i want to manage something on a users i should have this license or if i'm trying to manage some device then i should have this uh, license so i'm going to talk on how best we can actually assign the licenses in the real world it would be definitely by groups i'm going to talk on that i didn't talk about the users groups or anything on it what is tenant all of that stuff or as your active directory i'm going to actually take it from a very basic level really basic level to the uh, you know high level uh, skill okay so you need these licenses okay can i give a try on these these this yes microsoft offers some of the free trials so you can use any of the free trial that is available with you if you want to give it a try can i get uh, 100 all the features can be utilized in if during the free trial yes you can do it 100 all the features there's no limitation uh, but the limitation is the count of the number of licenses let's say if i go with any of these licenses either e3 or e5 i get a count of 250 user license so i can use 250 licenses okay so that's a huge for you to give a try okay so i'm going to actually try ems license okay uh, why i should go for only ems in this in this trial because as i promised i'm going to show you the conditional access i'm going to show you the uh, hybrid ad join the premium features of uh, active directory as your active directory all of that stuff so i need to go here so this actually gives me a full uh, feature set so that i can give it a try and i can show you all of that okay anybody can give it a try so simply go for here and say trial so you get a uh, sign up option so if you just search here with the trial as a site here i'm going back here one more time so you can search here if you just go here with e5 trial you have an option trial you just click on that so it will look at uh, what are these features all of that stuff so we we, we talked about all of these almost uh, if you look at here ems talks about you have the endpoint manager config, uh, configuration manager you have azure active directory 
you're gonna get the Microsoft Intune uh, and also DLP specific like information protection and also cloud app security. This is again a security uh, product because EMS is enterprise management security. The security specific products will be added here like threat management and ATP, Defender, all of that, all of that comes into EMS fine. Okay, but what we're gonna use is we're gonna use three things. Azure AD, Endpoint Manager Configuration, and Intune. Okay, these things we are gonna utilize. And rest of the things we are not gonna use actually. Okay, uh, but they are gonna offer as that license. Okay, so to create a license, <clears throat> you need to have at least one email ID that is just to prove who you are okay so i have already my email id that is my gmail id so i'm going to use the gmail id in the upcoming uh, steps so i'll just click on create a new account okay so i'm going to sign out this trial create a new account once again i think it's going back to the trial this page okay free trial click on this free trial it opens a new link make sure that you know if you have signed up uh, signed in already uh, try to log out because it will try to create with your existing account that you have already logged in into microsoft services Okay, so it's just asking just to verify what's your email ID that you have. So in my case, actually, I have my email ID. I can give that. So that's where it's going to send me a verification code also. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to enter my mail ID for this demo. So throughout the course, I'm going to use the same option. And this is my official email ID for this training course. So I can be reachable at memtrainings at gmail.com. This is my email ID. That's it. So it looks like you need to create a new account because for the first time, I'm actually taking a sign up in Microsoft site. So I have to click on setups account. So it's going to ask, hey, uh, who are you and what's your business? All of that stuff. They're not going to reach you on this ID, but just for creating an organization name later point. Okay, so I can say that, hey, myself, Paddy, and uh, myself, Maddy, also, I can be reachable on specific number, on this, this is my number, and my company name I can give here, okay, plus also, just I'm sorry, it I'm sorry, so what, what URL we need to enter to get this page? Okay, so you just go to EMS trial, okay? Okay, the, the first the first one is actually uh, what happened is it was cached seems to be by Google in an index. Okay, this is taking to the sign out option. So don't go here. Go to the first page uh, in the first page second link. Okay. Click on this. Okay, click on this free trial. Okay, this would actually take it to this page. Hey, uh, can, you, can you copy the URL in the chat? Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, why not? Uh, okay, chat to everyone. Just go there. Okay. I think it's also mentioned in the uh, somewhere in the slides also how to get a trial, but that's okay. If you're quite new, you can go and get it here. And your company size. So in my case, <laughs> I'm the only one person, but I'll just take maybe two to four. Maybe you all are there, so I'll take it maybe 10 to 24. Uh, company name. So this is the name that's gonna appear on my company name. So I I'm sure that you know you, you are already working in some company, right? So the company will show when you log in here, into Intune portal or maybe Azure portal, wherever. So it actually shows the company name. In this case, it's a company name. INS is the company name, right? So here I can give here uh, as my company name as a Parimari example. 
or I can give a primary Inchun demo example. Uh, and I can choose the location. This is a metadata where it's going to put in my data. So let's choose India. That's fine. So it's going to verify my mobile number here. Send a verification code. So I'm fine uh, to verify the code. So you can hear that why uh, that I got a code. I'm entering the code. It's zero nine. Verify. So my number got verified. Now I I'm gonna take here a five to six minutes explanation to you all if you're quite new. Okay. So this step is critical. Please try to uh, understand if you're quite new to uh, Azure or quite new to Intune. Okay. <clears throat> or quite new to Office 365. Or you might know Office 365, but you never heard any of these things okay so if you see here uh, we're actually talking about here once again we're talking about here uh, something called tenant if you see here there's a word called tenant or custom domain right so here this is called actually tenant okay tenant means like somebody to come into our own house as the they're going to pay rental or something like that that's called a tenant right so the vocabulary word in this page would be tenant so remember this word tenant okay we are gonna keep on using this word again and again in general terms it's like we are welcoming someone to our property and they're gonna pay uh, for that some money right that's the tenant so what happened is in the long long back when Microsoft actually created a product called office 365 they actually created a uh, product called on Microsoft.com website and that they actually created uh, a big active directory big active directory so they called as the Azure Active Directory think a little bit I'm sorry you know I might be using the wrong words little bit but just you know give you a high level idea I might have to use here uh, wrong way but with the meaning uh, would be easy for you to understand. So what they have done is they created a some identity management solution called Azure Active Directory. Okay, their uh, identity was everything on a, on Microsoft.com. So if I welcome someone today, they are going to be my tenant. So uh, they sell in a such a way that the Office 365 have to be buy from Microsoft, and they have to use a user ID and the password which can be created in office office again on a tenant so in this case uh, what's your tenant so let's say I want to uh, I have a company called IBM example example so I can create a company name with IBM and say here I'm going to use the all the accounts so in this case definitely IBM is already taken by a real company or somebody else so if I just use maybe you know like a random number it might be available okay so if I say check available so what happens is this tenant is available what I can do with this tenant you can create your user accounts you can create your user accounts groups you can assign the licenses you can manage all the identities like it's your on-premises active directory replacement what is this? This is actually replacing your almost uh, identity solution over the cloud by using this tenant. Uh, like, you know, in this case, one, two, three, four IBM example. But uh, can I map to my uh, company email, a uh, company domain name? Yes, you can do that. Uh, like, uh, if your company is IBM, you can do that. So, in our case, we do have a live thing. Like, I have my own domain. So, I'm going to map to the domain and I'm gonna show you okay so why should I map it if I don't map what will happen so here I wanted to open a notepad and give you an example here let me increase the font size so that everybody can easily see what I'm trying to type here let's say there's a user okay oh, is it uh, font size is okay or you want more font size let me know let's say there's a user okay user one example so how he logs in is 
user ID is like user one at company name is IBM.com. This is how you he logs in. But in this case, what happens? So when, since we are actually creating a tenant, what happens is user one at the rate whatever this this is the your business tenant name right so at the rate this tenant name dot on microsoft.com this is how user have to log in okay normally so this doesn't look good right so to replace this what we do is we will actually map the custom tenant this tenant is there, right? This is the tenant name. This tenant we will map to your company name, like in this case, IBM.com, so that the user can log in at IBM.com or user one in this case, right? Yeah. So this is how it's going to work. So, if uh, I mean, I made it very simple. Uh, I didn't went in a in depth of what is on premises active directory and what is azure active directory and compassion all of that stuff but in a simple way uh, in a simple way if you want to start anything in a microsoft azure cloud services you need to have a tenant okay so this tenant is normally they will create based on your company name so if your company has already office 365 i'm sure 100 percent in that case they have already a tenant so how do you find out so if you simply you know just uh, check in your email also the tenant name will be you know available if you just go to the gal find out in you know, smtp properties or somewhere or maybe in a portal or azure.com or portal.office.com you can find out what's your tenant also okay so that's how logically it will map so i'll just revise if for a person who is completely new so what we do we create a tenant what's a tenant name in this case tenant name is ibm one two three four whatever it is till here this is the tenant so the tenant will be created where on a microsoft site on a microsoft identity platform what is that a full name a full name would become as this so this is the full tenant name so how the user account will be login user have to log in with the user one at tenant name full tenant name that's a, at the read this but how i can map so it, it doesn't look good right this entire lengthy name so what we do we will map to our company name how we do we will log into azure ad portal and do that stuff so if you just want to you know show you high level and immediate basis uh just to you know give you this is already i opened and another portal so i'll just go to azure active directory here so if you see here this is my tenant what's my tenant name uh, intune demo 002 is my tenant name dot on microsoft.com so i can map this to a custom domain here i can make it as ibm.com so ibm.com what it will ask is it will ask you to verify hey you said ibm.com but is it really owned by you if so can you ping can you make a record in your dns so that i'll go and verify so that's how the validity would be you know validated so it doesn't mean that you know i gave id ibm.com it doesn't mean that you know it's gonna uh, username can be you know, verified it's no you have to verify by creating the dns records in fact we're gonna do that i'm gonna show you that also in a minute so everything is live uh, purely live and this is how it will be okay even though it's a demo you feel as a real so now can anybody suggest you know what to be then yeah ibm is already taken uh Kranti, so we cannot validate and it's not even available for you uh, and it was taken by definitely having company definitely that time so what we do is uh, we will go with another name here okay and um, in this case i have just taken as ibm as example so let's take the real example so i'm just gonna go here in tune uh demo 003 let's see if this is available so this name is unique it must be a unique as i said i can't have here ibm because it might be somebody taken so you cannot uh, use ibm here as a tenant so i'm going to give here intune demo 003 because two and one or other things have already taken so i'll just check availability it is available okay so 
what is happening is during this sign up it is actually creating a tenant for us so make sure that this information is saved somewhere so i'm just saving here for our entire class site so that we don't lose so click on next so it's going to ask for user id and password so i don't want to um so okay i don't want to share the password with you all uh, but the username i have to share so what is a user uh, id that can be become as the global admin permissions or maybe a super user okay in our case we call it as the administrator right so similar permissions what is that user so in this case i'm just gonna go as usual paddy at this account so he's going to give that information once i finish here all you said uh, he's going to give that entire detail so i'm going to actually uh, enter some password so give me a second um, let me enter my password every course i create a new password so yes another password so i'll just enter here oh it says that uh, okay i'll use different password i use this it's not taking okay i'll take uh, some other password okay come on i'm sorry so i'll just see different password okay that's my password so that's fine if you want to join you can join uh, all of that so it's going to actually take here it's going to what it is doing anybody can tell so it's going to on microsoft.com and it is going to create for us a tenant and inside the tenant it's gonna create a user account called paddy at at the rate tenant name.com so you see here this is a tenant got created okay and the user account also created for me yeah so till this point anybody has any doubts on how to create please no okay i'll take it as no so it just got created a tenant now let's go let's go back to your getting started page okay so you can simply go to endpoint dot microsoft dot com okay that's the url so you can put it into your favorites also okay now you see here whatever the name i gave here uh, like here paddy maddy intune demo that's my organization name it came right and i was able to log into intune portal or microsoft endpoint manager admin center but i would say this is not the best start actually you should learn a part of active directly then come back to intune so i'm taking a direction here to go back to engine portal sorry or to active directory and then i'm gonna teach you something there and then i'll come back to the engine portal hope that is okay with everyone or does anybody wants to take a break or something like that a quick five minutes break if anybody wants can take or i mean because yes, i don't know <laughs> yeah okay so it's time now uh, around uh, in this clock in this clock it's just 11 55 a.m we'll come back and join by uh, 12. okay okay Thanks. so whatever the time of, in your time zone we'll join by 12 shop please In between, if you have any questions, you can ask. Maybe if someone has. And I heard like hybrid join. What is hybrid join? Like it's uh, like. And that's right? very yeah. That's very important one actually. Hybrid AD join. Hmm? Okay. So <clears throat> I'm gonna actually explain that also uh, part of the course. So. I'll tell you uh, with a simple drawing, maybe okay. during this break time, we can utilize that to 
give you an idea but if anybody is missing anyway we are gonna lend that also as part of the course so don't worry about that so you have the uh, on-premises active directory here that's called ed active directory only so you have here users you also have devices right so everything is working fine here but what happened is now these days everything is in a moving to the cloud right so your company has has maybe uh, moved to some services maybe a service let's take a server or maybe a web application or some applications or something it's moved to cloud okay so now uh, now this user whatever this user is there this user uh, here he no need to remember a different user account name and a password all of that stuff so what to be done is uh, we actually make these two identities as I said earlier also uh, or in another 10 minutes also I'm going to explain to you what is Azure Active Directory okay instead of we directly jump into endpoint portal we said uh, we will go to Azure Active Directory right so this is uh, here in the cloud there is something called Azure Active Directory okay so in short we call AAD okay yeah uh, who was this this was Srikan right yeah yeah Srikan so we call it as a AAD so now here also identity when i say identity what is Srikant? like you will have a Srikant at the rate as your ad user id and Srikant at the rate on-premises ad so it makes more complex right instead of that how about having a single identity okay that it might be uh, like you know Srikant at the rate your company name dot com so you log in either here on this computers or on these computers or to access these applications it should be a seamless uh, seamless authentication process for that what Microsoft has done is they come up with a solution called hybrid AD okay what is hybrid AD hybrid AD is like you have whatever the identities like stake on this here account so the same account will sync here to to where to Azure AD also so this ID is sync to and you're ready. So now the second account is already available here. You no need to create any additional account and the password remains same. So for that, for that seamless authentication, what they have done is the device is there. For example, this device. So this device, what happens is the right uh, explanation would be it actually joins to Active Directory, this machine. Also, this machine also joined to Azure AD. So AD join, yeah. you know, if you ask, you know, it's like, you know, you go and take a membership, right? You you get the membership uh, from Active Directory, either on-premises or on a cloud. So two places, it will have a membership. So nothing wrong, right? So it's the same idea. Yeah. The same, same device is the same. Device is the same. Have it two. Yeah, with the same user ID. So for this, yeah. what is in between this mystery is there, right? This mystery what is this so that actually uses something called ad connect tool what it is it is called ad connect so this okay. tool is a powerful tool it does the job for you okay so who's going to install this who's going to do this configuration part ad guy not you but i'm going to show you that as part of the course okay and yeah. also i'm going to show you interestingly srikant here in on premises you have a ccm server right so this is ccm machines also whatever the devices are managed with the ccm this should you know upload to endpoint manager console here to these devices right and also to manage all that stuff also i'm going to show you and also when you are join any of the machine let's say i have a windows 10 machine here what I'm doing, I'm actually joining the machine to Active Directory, local Active Directory. Okay, to the local Active Directory. When I join, automatically it also joins to Azure AD. Automatic. This process should go automatic. Okay, so if we do that. Or if a user is trying to log in, but the machine is already joined to on premises, we automatically join the machine to Azure AD. We're going to do that. Okay, so 
this stuff is why sh i should i explain why should i explain means i no need to explain to you all but these are the advanced concepts that are demanding uh, today in the job skills okay and you need to have these skills to be frank okay at least the understanding if i explain everything if you capture everything that's well and good if you don't capture at least you know what is happening now you know ad can night okay yeah. so if something goes wrong if the device is not coming back to the endpoint portal you know why it is not coming okay all of that stuff we are going to learn okay hybrid ad is that okay okay for and, this uh, again yeah yeah we are giving the access from uh, azure portal right Uh, it has been changed. Uh, then how you got connected to an endpoint manager? Uh, like how you get access from Azure? It's directly how you got connected. Uh, yeah, that's why. Yeah, I'll tell you. Actually, that's why <clears throat> I know that you know. I think you are quite new to the Intune, right? And as you yes. also, that's why I know. No, I, I will cover. That's why I said you know. Instead of you go here first, you go to Active Directory. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> go to Active Directory. I'm gonna tell that's the same thing. Okay, that's why I said you know yeah. I will spend you know at least ten minutes to fifteen minutes. We do all that basic thing to learn in uh, Azure Active Directory. Then we'll go back to our actual step and for manager admin center. I can understand. <laughs> Mostly can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. I will be you back know, in one yeah. minute. I'll go for. Yeah, please take a break. One. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, I'll also take. Oh, because it's already too well. I'll just be back. Yeah, yeah. Take a break. No problems. Are you there, Paddy? Yeah, I'm there. Okay. Is everybody back? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. So, uh, I want since we have taken a break, also let me refresh uh, what we have done so far. Okay, and uh, that might help us. Okay, give me a second. Could you please remove that calendar? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. So, so what we have done is, uh, I have actually explained how to take the trial as part of the trial uh, taking. Actually, what Microsoft need is Microsoft needs a tenant to be created because this Intune or whatever the service is coming is from cloud service, right? So for that, uh, we need to go to the EMS trial and just. Click on free trial. That would actually start creating a tenant, a tenant name in on Microsoft.com. Okay, so we gave a name. This becomes as our company name kind of thing. So what happens if if your company name is already taken by somebody? So you can give as a zero one or whatever it is. It doesn't matter because at the end the user names will be visible with your actual domain name, not with the uh, not like you know here in this case like you know user. at the rate no it doesn't looks like that it looks like you know a uh, user at my company name maybe ibm.com this is how it, it's going to look like that so for that we need to have it in so since a uh, few of the uh, a few of the learners active learners here within this forum are quite new to azure active directory i must have to explain a very basic level of azure active directory at this point of time and the advanced topics of the azure active directory we will be learning later point but at this point it's going to be very basic so that you know what is azure active directory so whatever the service was uh, enable this uh, endpoint manager admin center it is actually on top of active directory azure active directory right so because this is the tenant name right this is the tenant name Uh, which was created for us so now let's actually go back to our active directory i do not want to go to microsoft endpoint manager now and make you confuse or make you to you know uh, bluff you that you know we can do all of that stuff honestly because we just have to understand first uh, active directory as your active directory then 
we can go back to engine or the endpoint portal and we can work on it okay so how to go to uh, how to go to uh, azure active directory so there are two ways okay you open up your uh, portal and go to uh, portal dot azure.com this is the uh, this is the portal for all microsoft azure cloud services okay so microsoft offers lot of cloud services like uh, you can create virtual machines you can have your sql server you can have your storage account Kubernetes services dockers lot of things okay so out of that there is a service called identity service so what is that identity services so microsoft uses azure active directory so if you just you know click on these three uh, bars you have here active directory azure active directory you can drag and drop here if you want so if you don't see uh, you can actually go here and search azure active directory also this whole this is how also you can search okay so when i click on active directory so what is the use of this azure active directory so simple you create your users okay you create your user accounts your groups okay you can join the machines also to uh, active directory so that you can apply these settings whatever you want to do it and you might have some of the applications so just wanted to tell you here uh, it's a combination of uh, a different skill but just wanted to explain here let's say in the on-premises you might have only identity like user id and password but here even the applications also in a cloud it's a different different protocols rest apis and different protocols will work on a cloud native application so the applications actually create here okay the developers creates here applications and for these uh, they grant the application permissions all of that stuff okay in azure active directly so you also have your applications okay in fact we are going to do the uh, advanced concepts like cloud management or all, all of that we might you know come up here and do that stuff also that's okay for now you see here you can create a user account so can we create a user account yes so let's create a user account in this case as a user create a user account so uh, before we create navigation i wanted to tell about navigation so we call this is this whatever it was selected at this point this is the main navigation okay for azure uh, any of the services and the second part this this side okay which is post to the uh, uh, from the left to right is a new blade so we call it in the microsoft azure world uh, as a blade so this is navigation and if i click on active directly this opens a new blade that's and if you see here somewhere in the bar also here the address bar where is my cursor is there right here it will come as a blade also if you see here somewhere as a menu blade all of that so we call it as a blade everything as a blade okay so that's a navigation chart okay so i'm going to active directory creating a user account so let's create a user account so i can invite some other person also or i can create a new icon so uh, our course is limited to creating a new user account not for this this is something called a business to business active directory but we are creating a user account so let's create here an account called chris okay so how chris account will be there so chris has to log in with either rate into demo 003.on microsoft.com that's what he has to use we have not verified it so let's let's see the base thing okay at least once and then we do the advanced topics okay so here we see chris is the person and what's the password you want to auto generate uh, let's automatically generate this is the user account and the password so i'm going to create here chris chris at and uh, the password is this at this point of time and uh, what is the user location where he's going to use so i'm going to this is mandatory whenever you create any user account in azure active directory uh, to use that user uh, i mean that functionality to work properly you might have to you you must have to even not, not might you must have to update the user's location so this is the first mistake that most of the students do they forget to update this 
uh, why this is very important is the metadata is uh, government as per government laws they have to bind the law right so you have to choose here where you are you know this user belongs so in this case india i'll just create the user account got created congrats so now we have a user account got created how the user will log in let's say uh, i have some something to do maybe in azure or maybe an office portal or maybe some applications then the user have to log in right so what i'll do is i'll just open a cognitive mode my browser and uh, my apps dot microsoft dot com uh, this is a url okay which which will show if you assign any of the applications to the user he can just go and open okay so in this case the user account is chris at the rate uh, what is his name this is the tenant name right so tenant name so click on next so it's taking it's asking for the user id so if nobody is logged in and changed the password it's going to ask for us to change the password so i'm also changing the password quickly and signing in so i'm able to log in so as a chris as an end user okay don't confuse as an end user as a chris i'm able to log in and if there are any applications it will be visible here in my apps okay and here let's say i have maybe a salesforce application i bought it maybe it will be visible like that okay and this user also can uh, log in with MS Office if you have taken a MS Office trial or we have integrated then he can log into uh, portal dot office that's office and if you have any of the license he can get that okay so that's how it's working fine so Chris now able to log in with this specific user account right so let's also uh, try to create any of the groups how do we create a groups so group click on the groups you can create here uh, like uh, it's a security group uh, test I'm gonna come back to the groups one more time uh, I'm gonna explain to you all all of you like what is this what is that all of that's a description uh, and dynamic user all of that stuff is very 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 important quickly I'm just creating a, a default group let's create as a test group I can make this group uh, to a member by going here I can add that member like Chris here by search for the user account Chris and simply select it so it's it this is how it actually works AD right so I give you a little bit of background information how the users groups can be created but not in depth of the groups I'm gonna come back here we'll keep on coming back to the groups again and again a later point also okay now let me explain the tenant wide explanation from a top so you see here this is my company name and and i am the global administrator the first account that was signed in as a party at my tenant i'm the global admin global admin means if you are coming from on premises it's like your enterprise admin your domain admin okay so he can do all the things okay that's called the global admin so within uh, within azure active directory you also have a roles and administrator so like you know application admin uh, building admin like that you know different things are there we're going to come back here and also we're going to work with intune administrator the intune uh, admin also we're going to work with that role later point but just wanted to tell you yes you also have some of the default roles so you can create a user account and come back here and assign the roles okay so now if you see here this is my tenant information global admin and what is the current license I have for my tenant I'm eligible and I have a license of P2 license pre uh, premium 2 so now I might have to explain to you a little bit of Azure AD and a licensing point of view my friends otherwise uh, it doesn't look good to me or to you also so let me explain a little bit of licensing i'm sorry this is also part of your course okay without understanding of your licensing it's difficult to learn so let's go to azure um, licensing so every licensing information is mentioned in the uh, calculator as you calculator we call it okay azure ad license okay so 
here if i just go here pricing it's gonna calculate what we call so here it's gonna explain with it these three uh, plans so first thing first let me put it in a usd it makes it easy for everyone to understand the pricing so if you, anybody go back to microsoft azure and create their tenant for free no need to pay not even trial no need to even trial also anybody can create a tenant okay like on microsoft.com for example like this so this is the tenant anybody can create so what are the limitations that you have so you can go for a 500,000 if you're coming from 500,000 means in um, like in uh, Indian numbers like five lakh objects can be created that's a huge right for any company any company there's a huge limit of user accounts all of that stuff but there's a limitation of uh, powerful capabilities like you know application integration we talked about the there's a ad as your ad also integrates with the applications right that's very limited you have here options single sign on options limited all of that stuff but the exciting things here if you look at here premium features that like you know password protection and the self self password can be reset all of that additional features which are coming including hybrid identity like your on-premises ad to sync up all of that stuff actually comes in a uh, p1 license minimum also p2 okay p1 and p2 is the uh, base minimum that you need to have okay p1 is the common that you see in any company okay you also have a p2 licenses so if you have a question that do i need to buy for everyone p2 or p1 no you no need you can um, you can identify your resources and uh, that specific business unit can be a p2 or p1 mix and match you can do that and you might have a question that i have already office 365 so can i am eligible with some of the premium licenses yes even office 365 also what happens is when you try to sign up in the back end it actually creates a tenant it creates a tenant and that tenant let me show you that for you so let's see portal lot uh, office.com right so if i just go to portal lot office.com slash admin which is my admin so let me so if I, this is the admin okay so this is where you can do control you can control user account user creation and reset password licensing all of that stuff also can be done from here you see active users i can also do the uh, chris user account i can reset the password if i want i can do i can assign the licenses you see here i have a licensing options all of that stuff i can do here also like you know p1 license only to be assigned i don't want to assign everything for chris maybe just a p1 license i can do that okay i can only assign only in two license so if i just go here to this guy and say intune only i can do that so for azure active directly you have different management options one is azure ad a specific portal you have right this is what other one would be the office 364 you can do it here most of the things can I do it from endpoint manager? Yes, my friend, you can do it here. You see, users, you can create a new user here also. Chris is coming up here also. I've not done anything here, right? It's coming. So think in this way. It's a hyperlink, boss. My friend, it's a just the hyperlink, right? You click anywhere, wherever they want, they can simply integrate, right? It's a simple uh, click. Users and groups are also part of now endpoint manager. They can create here. Close kind of no, you, sorry Paddy, wherever you create the user it reflects in all the other portals exactly created yes. it in the 365 or microsoft free it would reflect in admin um in endpoint manager and azure yes it is it is that's so why thing. would you even have the office 365 then why not just do everything I just... the new platform <laughs> okay i'll tell you so when it started with the office 365 and in tune also some of the capabilities were tightly integrated with office 365 okay later point they wanted to make it everything to microsoft direction to azure and then again they have taken a redirection to have 
completely everything with the uh, SCCM uh, tied up. <laughs> okay, so they have mm -hmm. taken their directions, but now it's a matured direction. That's why you are able to hear all the time now Intune job postings or Intune skills required or companies are implementing Intune because it's almost matured product. When I say almost, it's not fully, <laughs> definitely almost matured. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is just the hyperlinking. So wherever they want, they can simply uh, hyperlink this uh, links. Okay. I hope I cleared your answer. Yes, yes. Okay, so you have multiple options. If you are the Office 365 admin, you can do it from a admin center. If you are from AD guy, he will work only from here. If you are Intune admin, you will be working from here. Okay, this is how it's gonna work. So these are the basic thing I just wanted to explain to you. Okay, I also talked about the uh, uh, here the premium licenses. If you just you know go to this link in your free time and just go and compare what are the features. So I pasted in the chat also, or you can Google as the uh, Azure Active Directory pricing. It talks. So one starts from if you see here uh, the free one, we know it, five hundred in thousand objects, and then Office three six five E one E three E five. F3, these are all licensing options, and this is uh, these costs are separate, it's part of your office license. Okay, if you buy E1, it's a just the uh, basic license where you have your Outlook works from only web based, your Word works from only web that's called E1. E3 is a desktop applications, and uh, E5, F3, those are advanced, um, which contains your security options. So so if you just you know compare uh, some of them are advanced options also will be covered with the only e5 either way if you have the p1 license that's a six dollar and another three dollar if you pay for user then it's going to be p2 premium two license so that's the licensing part of you okay so in our lab we will you know we can play the way we want it like without license we can play with license uh, p1 p2 also why because you have an option uh, always either uh, from office 365 or maybe anywhere you have an option to take that simple checkbox i can take out all of these checkboxes and say i wanted to limit to p1 or maybe just a p2 like that you can work out okay so what is the best way of assigning licenses Let's come to this point. So the best uh, best way to assign the licenses is always you create a group, okay? Group of um, Active Directory group, Azure AD group, and then and then to that group you assign the license. Let's say this is a test group. So what I can do, I can go to the licenses here and say assign license. I can simply say, hey, I want to assign all of this license. Simply say. So. The users uh, should be part of that specific group. That's it. That's how you can assign the licenses for a group, and you know now how to do it for a user also. So the best way recommended method, all the companies will follow. Even Microsoft recommends to always assign any group level. Okay, this is not the end. Actually, we are going to keep on assigning. We will be doing again and again. But I'm just trying to explain the very basic things for you all. Okay. And uh, in AD, uh, now I have just completed this tenant information. Uh, there's a unique thing that is, this is a tenant ID. In the Microsoft, in the back end, with this tenant ID, they are going to work. So, what is that? This is a long, lengthy, unique number. Okay, they work with this ID. So, that's their unique ID, like your passport kind of thing. It's a unique thing. Um, this, uh, this is your ID okay tenant id so for us the tenant id to remember is this like intune demo 003 on microsoft.com this is our tenant but for microsoft uh, internally they work based on this tenant id so they when you contact them they might give you to you know ask you to you know provide this tenant id even in some of your powershell scripts you always refer to this uh, tenant id okay now uh, i explained this now I'm going to explain this as you really connect. So when you want to sync with your on-premises Active Directory, you're going to do this. Okay, for now, uh, I'm going to only focus on a cloud uh, today. 
so we're not going to do anything okay if i'm correct uh might be on next saturday on 24th we might you know jump into ad connect concepts okay and uh, this is like you know normal things for registration all of that stuff and now you might have a question hey how can i connect my custom domain so you even when you when i try to log in if i if you remember or if i just you know if you allow me if i try to oh this is a guest huh? okay let me yeah if when i try to log in here sorry i used all the browser options <laughs> so portal.office.azure.com if i try to log in what is happening if i put you know uh, my id example so what happens is the next minute okay i put my id it actually takes to some other uh, log on screen all of that stuff you see a company's approval all of that stuff is coming and if i approve i would be logging right so that's a different story uh, so you have in the back end all that screen look and feed and the logo so what what all the things you are getting here so if i put it here my company logo is coming okay my id is coming here maybe this is my background screen right and i'm also prompted for my mfa okay and i can if i want i can go back my password based authentication all of that stuff right so i don't want to log in now but just wanted to you know uh, tell you that um, you have this background option this these are your user experience options right these are what exactly these are the user experience options so how can you actually customize this so these all the things can be customized in your ad specific so when you actually go and do all this stuff within your uh, endpoint manager in your company this might be has been already done but you have to do it in here also because some of that customizations also required in order to work windows autopilot okay so we are going to do the customizations now okay and also we are going to do the custom domain name okay i think we have another 30 minutes uh, or so so we can complete this time uh, these steps so that tomorrow you can log in with custom domain as well as uh, with the uh, user experience so let me go back here to custom domain as a first step so my friends i have actually uh, a domain already for my lab i bought it so land in my lab.com is my domain name which i bought it meaning i went to godaddy and bought it for money not for free okay uh, why did i bought because i wanted to simulate everything as uh, S same as your company so think that this is your company okay so you might be working in ibm or microsoft or any other company so company name at the rate i mean username at the rate company name.com they should be able to log in for that i need to have a domain so that's why i bought it in my case so i can click on add now it is actually showing me to go to my uh, domain where, where i have this domain so in this case i have my domain in my godaddy give me a second i have to log into godaddy and point to dns give me a second i'm sorry it, it takes two minutes or oh, one one and a half minute before i share my screen to you all okay this is land my lab right so i'll just go to managed in a settings right here okay i'm going to stop my screen share here and share something else okay so i'm a very confusing guy in terms of screen sharing i get myself confused Why don't you just log on to GoDaddy on this browser? Yeah, I have a couple of other confidential domains also. <laughs> Give me no uh, problem. It doesn't take much minute. It doesn't take much time. Okay. Uh, even it will be uh, better, uh, Barry. You uh, see, you see here. Like the domain. domain. Yeah, you see here. So this is my domain. Okay. So what I have to do? I have to add 
that specific record, right? So yeah, that was txt file. Yeah, txt file, all of that stuff, right? So uh, either you can add txt or MX record. You have two options actually provided. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll actually I think you're you're able to see right this. Uh, the yeah. domain uh, information takes yeah let me show here from so, so it, either you have to increase uh, the, the screen uh, size uh, this is already increased you man you know uh, you don't find anywhere 175 zoom <laughs> okay i think uh, is the same case for everyone yes i can see it well well right yeah because you know i know that you know this is the normal feedback so I'm the only one person I think so, you know, gives the good text. So here, either you have to verify on it, uh, on uh, alias of text or MX. So let me go back to my GoDaddy, okay? This is my GoDaddy, okay? So here, uh, I can simply go back to my domains and domain settings and DNS. Uh, in DNS management because I bought it from GoDaddy. So this is how but if you bought it from Namecheap or some other different steps But at the end the record creation is same. So click on add So here uh, you tell me you no know, you want me to go for MX or TXT Anybody choose We can verify anyway Okay, because we have two options So I'll go with text hope everybody's okay so it's the at the rate is the host alias that we need to do. So txt I have to choose host is at the rate, and uh, here the value is this. Uh, so simply I paste this value and say save. Okay, now I'm gonna stop my screen share. This is what uh, you have to do on a DNS side. Okay, let me actually share the screen from application give me a second yeah this is how i'm gonna do it every time i'm sorry but you all will find me like that able to see no right not it not yet yeah, yeah you should be you should be able to see now right yes, yes. so yes. now okay we have added that record okay uh -huh. So what uh, is the general theory is uh, it takes actually 70, 72 hours theoretically, but since the GoDaddy or Namecheap, it can replicate anywhere from two minutes to five minutes between. Okay, so all you have to do is you have to click on verify. Before I click on verify, I wanted to show you what I've done actually, right? So from Active Directory, we went to custom domain and click on add custom domain. And then we added our domain name called learninmylab.com. And it asked us to make uh, these records to be created, any of the record type, either TXT or MX. So in our case, we went to GoDaddy and we created this record. And now I'm going to click on this blade, verify. So it's going to verify if the record is available. Okay. So now it has verified. Okay. So if you want to, you know, uh, if you get an er error, let me show you be uh, before. I haven't, you know, made here as a, make as a primary also just wanted to extend here a simple troubleshooting skill uh, dns uh, propagation check okay this is the uh, uh, what 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 what's my dns.net okay if you just go here type learn in my lab.com right so the record type is what we have created txt so in your case whatever the domain name whatever the record just search here and you can see here it should be replicated everywhere yes you will get an error you see here very few locations it's not uh, replicated like you know new zealand or maybe some part in uh, korea and south africa maybe a latency is there that's fine but majority is replicated so all other locations it will be replicated in another uh, it should complete within 72 hours okay so now it's replicated, even New Zealand. If I do a, do a quick refresh, right? So it's still pending with the Korea. 
you're getting me right so in case if you get an uh, error make sure that you know go to the dns propagation any of the uh, website and check that record whether it is properly replicated or not okay let's say if i go for a record it's replicated everywhere okay there's some problem in a switcher land that's fine okay so this is how you would you know verify okay i hope no confusion no troubleshooting required further so once you have uh, verified it's asking me to you know make a primary why what is the meaning of primary is like if you see here my previous domain that is my tenant name is actually there is a tick mark here you see primary meaning if i create a user like a chris it was actually taken at the rate at the rate my tenant name dot com right my tenant name was taken when i try to create which is in this case user at the rate by default so when i make as a primary as this so if i create one more time maybe a user name it actually creates user at the rate learn in my lab dot com it, it gets created okay so that's why it is making me to make a primary so i can make as a primary can i make yes you have to do it 100 percent and then simply close this that's it okay now the tick mark is more to top which is leninmylab.com let's check it go back to users new user okay here maybe this time user one example so if you see here by default it is trying to create in a leninmylab.com so let's quickly create user one here example and the user's location should be united states okay this created user so what i can do is i can go back to the user profile and if i want i can change it so user should be able to log in with user one either this id okay if i want you know i can go here european name i can change this to something else if i want something else means that should be you know my verified one right so like if i want to roll back i can roll back to here okay so you want to see how this user able to log in let's do that quickly uh i think this is one yes so this time we'll try to log in uh portal as your example anything just to authenticate right so user one at the rate i can go back to what's my company name len in my lab dot com okay so user one no you put a uh, l n yeah lab dot com okay so now it takes to my company portal so what i want in future i want to change this logo background all of that stuff in another 10 15 minutes if time allows if not we'll schedule for tomorrow so i can put it here whatever the password the password change the first time so i must have to do what about in an organization you have to set up like 50 users at once yeah i'm going to talk on that if you're really interested on that i'm, I'm happy to do but these yeah. things will actually go to as your active directory team not to the intune guy okay our responsibility comes into managing the uh, managing the devices or the users okay but if you're trying to do from a uh, bulk yes you have an option so you just have to go to i told you you know three different um, interfaces like i told as your active directory uh, url also told office 365 also endpoint manager but always go to because this is a job by ad guy right so you go to as your ad active directory go to users you have an option called bulk operations you can create a uh, users um, from here you can delete all of that stuff can be done so here it gives you a sample sample data so you just have to download the sample data fill that sample format okay keep everything like as it is okay example Chris information has been given and then once you have done just say go back here and upload it here that's it it gets created uh -huh. for you okay? okay and also you can do it from the powershell which is our <laughs> Uh, our handy tool you can do that 
um, you, you can also do it from here cloud shell this is a cloud shell we call it there are a lot of other options but these are goes to ad but you need to know you need to know what to be done from where at least yeah. that's why i'm taking this okay uh, so we were able to log in with that uh, account called user one at the rate learning my lab.com right that's good so we were able to log in now if i want to you know change my user which is chris uh, sorry not this not this anymore so yeah i don't want to confuse so now i want to change this chris account to log in because if you see chris is able to log in with tenant name i don't want this to happen now anymore because now we have verified so what we can do we can type learn so we can simply change that account everything save this okay now chris can lock in from now onwards like this okay so these are the basics from the ad side okay so now you know what is active directory how to create groups you know i didn't talk a lot on that but i'm going to talk but before that i wanted to give you the uh, rich experience okay how can i give is i can go back to uh, branding okay so this is where i have to do the custom branding so configure so you i mean this is definitely not you you it will be done by azure ad guy and azure ad guy also will go back to a designer team in a company and there is approved logo company logo and the background text all of that stuff will be there okay so in my case what i have done is actually uh, i have already created some of the logos so if you see here this is my squared logo my background screen like my company logo all of that stuff and the other one is i like this beach so i created this uh, as a screen with uh, 1920 into uh, 1080 and this is my banner name so these things i have already created okay so what i can do is i can actually upload here uh, directly but before that i wanted to talk and i wanted to show you here you see here what's my background image the background image as i said earlier it should be approved and designer should be made it available 1920 into 1080 so click on this okay and uh, it would be c column paddy logos of uh, yeah so here well, I made it as uh, it's a uh, what is 1920 and uh, 1080. So I'll just take this. So this is my screen, which is perfectly fitting for me. And uh, for my logo, I'm also making here logo change. So logo change is it should be 10 KB with 2080. So I made it this. And uh, text, if you want, you know your username, example user at whatever it is you know you can give any of the text that you wanted to give here and advanced settings background screen so these are these are basically these are uh, will be done by your ad team we don't worry so this is my squared logo in a dark theme i can customize these things again the same thing i want to sorry the above one this one square one so for a dark logo what should be there other one how it should look like all that so do you want to you know opt them to sign in like for some time so that the uh kimsey that's a call keep me sign in option that's uh, a kind of a token which will you know enable so you can simply save it so i have just customized so what would happen now if i log in here just opening and a new browser portal dot azure dot com uh, with a user account called Chris at learn in my lab dot com. As soon as I put it, okay, and give it tab and click on next, it actually changes in the back end. You see, and also nice uh, look, all of that. And also, if you see here, whatever I mentioned, the text that is coming up. 
okay uh, you see here this text is coming up right so nice so i can enter the password and i can log in clear Yes, no. Easy, right? Yeah. If you yeah. go back, go back, please go back on that, Chris. Yeah. Chris, you can't? No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can go back. Huh. So, this page, will this page, will this logo change? Microsoft logo, will then it change here also or no? It will change, right? If you click on next, it's changing. It's changed to Paddy oh. Okay. Okay. Well, it's changed and also uh, just for since you asked a very good question I uh, appreciate that so let's say you know you want to customize right something see uh, as a German okay they wanted in the German language the UI as uh, different languages on demanding like French and German that can be also done customized see I've done as a default one now let's do the same customization same files same logos all of that stuff for maybe a language called here Dutch right I can do that I can do that so it can be assigned actually it can be assigned to uh, uh, different so that it would you know determines so okay this user is coming from Germany so it should be you know, displayed as that banner and logo all that stuff so well, where, would you, you can, where would you specify and say okay users from germany will see this login users from how would the user microsoft is uh, because you know the portal lot as you.com itself it can uh, it has that capability built-in capability to automatically identify from which uh, from which region it is coming let's say if i select here so i know that the ip source ip which is coming is from dutch okay so if i was in Pick germany up. and i logged on yeah. then i would see the okay yeah it comes that okay so these are the uh, basic things okay if we have another 10 minutes i think uh before we wind up for today uh so far any questions Yeah, if not, I'll take five minutes to explain about AD groups and then we will jump into uh, conclusion. Okay, for today's session. So I didn't talk about much on the uh, groups. Now I'm going to do it. Okay, in a simple, easiest way. So groups are very similar that you have in your on premises Active Directory groups. But these groups are very intelligent, very, very intelligent. Let's say if I create a new group here. I have here security group option okay but you see you can give here you can also create here a office 365 group meaning the uh, DL specific you know right you with your team will have a DL so that group okay office 365 but in our case it's a security most of the time so I'm just giving this as a uh, group name is in tune or users example okay so this is uh, the description you can mention now the thing is uh, see as, as I talked in the beginning I will actually take it the entire course in a two methods one is the uh, cloud only other one would be the on-premises right so when we go to the on-premises all of that stuff uh, advanced topics I'm gonna actually talk on this topic okay uh, this is okay this specific option yes no toggling option this is a high level option within Azure Active Directory specific uh, for a privileged identity management concepts okay meaning every user including CEO or including a uh, global admin or the super admin also will be a normal user in Azure Active Directory whenever they request or whenever they need and superpowers or to perform some action in a certain point of time or maybe a limited time or maybe a future time you can grant access based on toggling this yes and no okay for that there is a something called Azure Active Directory privileged identity management solution that is part of Azure ADP2 license okay I'm going to show you that also 
okay how you can be a normal user so any user is a normal user all the time so that user is will not have any uh, superpowers but whenever he is going to implement that specific change or whenever he needs he can self request to the azure active directory to provide that super capabilities uh, during that specific time zone or time or maybe a future time and then that user will get an email kind of a notification hey you are now super user go ahead and do that changes and he will be doing that changes okay so that's a big story on this so i don't want to do it now and make it confuse you so i'm not going to talk on this but this is called pim privileged identity management okay it's part of azure active directory okay so i'll just clear this um so i'm going with the default okay now here you have a options called membership so there's something called assign meaning a group you know that for example a user from user one user two or from india so simply assign statically okay uh, a user from maybe uk you can assign from manually but how many days we can do is manually like you know if you go back to your on premises today's active directory you don't have a dynamic option my friends here you don't have any dynamic option your guys your your help desk team is literally creating a user account in your location for example let's say if it is uh, delhi uh, he is going to uh, create a user based on delhi or london and he is making that user to part of all users in a london all uh, users maybe uh, for a specific project manually he is doing all of that stuff but not anymore with azure active directory because it's a cloud based and very intelligent compared with your uh, active directory which is from your on premises so now you have a dynamic user either it can be a user or a device okay it can be a user or device that can be automatically become as a member uh, for this uh for this group dynamically based on a location or based on a role or based on some xyz settings that are available dynamically it will be uh, so that let's say th let's take a uh, simple scenario i want to assign intune license for every user what i can do if a user coming from uh, maybe a london they should have an intune license simply location i specify as a dynamic as a location as london and uh, for run all intune users i simply sign the license so tomorrow new user comes as a chris automatically he gets a license that's why it's recommended to assign even a group based so a lot of fun will be there with the dynamic users and uh, dynamic uh, devices for your information autopilot will be done uh, with the dynamic devices okay so we will work with the uh, groups lot okay this is what about the uh, groups i'm sorry i took three more minutes extra but give me five minutes more to conclude this uh, i would like to you know end up here uh, the because we know you know after that you can simply here select here and say dynamic query and a lot of query options is there is not all of that stuff properties like a devices android or os version object display name all of that you know different labels are there we are going to work on with those labels later point uh, and we'll create those so this is what the uh, first session on uh, intune so to learn anything on a cloud you need to have the azure active directory i give the very basic and i have also uh, explained the introduction to the intune and the microsoft endpoint manager admin center so coming back to the fee uh, i'm sorry uh, because i have to uh, conclude uh, another three more minutes so if you're coming from india you know upi uh, payment easy either you can pay to uh, this link uh, the b pavan.26 at okay icsi icsi this is a european if you are uh, from foreign uh, other than india outside based dot india you can ask me paypal link i'll give you one but one to one because i don't want to expose everyone the paypal link and bank details as a security uh, issue okay and that's it uh, i'm open for everyone's questions okay if uh, and uh, from tomorrow onwards you pay and i'm only i'm going to only explain otherwise i'm not going to invite the send the invite link for you 
reason being uh, this is a three hour session which i have already taken i as i promised in youtube i said two sessions which is one one and a half hour plus one and a half hour but this is three hours which we have already taken so uh, from the next session you have to pay and uh, learn or uh, come to the class okay do pay, so uh, do we pay the full amount or we pay half and then two is the no, end of the whole no, pay the rest no no full amount good question but okay. full amount you see my uh, the explanation you know why i have offered free is for a continuous of three hours you will come to know my depth of knowledge you know my uh, speaking skills and easy to understand and my uh, out of all of this the teaching style is very important not everyone will uh, understand this or everybody not everyone will have this kind of you know, style of teaching method okay, okay. well it's important for me what i find is it's important these videos are recorded because like yeah i'll come back to you on that yeah. Sure. This you recording this is very useful, and then you yes. just send it to to me or send it to us. So I, I would expect we do the same for each one. And then it's easier that way. Yeah, I'll I'll come back to you on the recording part. So at this point of time, um, as I said, you know, I will uh, I'll talk to you one to one on this. Okay, but recording, yes. I cannot promise uh, to give you the recording, but I'll give you uh, whenever you missed out or something like that. Uh, if you're not able no, to do it, no, I'll have it. For me, because uh, like I don't see why that would be a problem. Like you've recorded this now, we download, then I can refer. Like later on, if I when I want to study, I can go back to the videos and look at them. So if I don't see why recording would be an issue, if we paid for the course, then we're entitled to the recording as well. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, I'll talk to you site. Okay. 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 That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Anybody has any questions like Srikon on the course content? Uh, you might be expecting something else. If I was not covered in that in this course, let me know. Or do you have any questions uh, like, you know, yeah. I was expecting for uh, Azure, like how to take access on that. As your subscription, you're talking about? Uh, not as your subscription. From Azure, we uh, take access to do that, right? How what? we get into that? Like uh, only uh, how to get into that access access from the company portal, from Azure portal. How we can get access into Endpoint Manager, okay. like see, yeah. and all. If you are in this portal, okay. If you are in yeah. this portal, you can search for Intune. Okay, you don't get it. I told you yeah. this already. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, huh. yeah, next uh, what step uh, like how we can I have to this into the yeah. You clicked on it, it goes here. Okay. If you're asking me about the rules uh, or back that's a role role based access, yes, you can do that. Uh, we're gonna uh, we are gonna talk on that later point as part of the course. You have a different roles. You can assign for a guy for only help desk, read only, customize, all of that stuff we are gonna talk on it. Okay. All right. Okay, but this should be a favorite now. Okay. So as I said earlier, we are going to actually talk a cloud only first. Then we'll go to the on premises, and then um, this is how you know you have a devices here. You can see this is my uh, from other lab. So you have a devices here, like in you know, a co-managed. Uh, some of them are here. If you see, maybe just one device is there co-managed. Okay, and these are data. Uh, you know which will upload co-management configuration all of that stuff this is a cloud management gateway but attaching the services all of that stuff we will do it all right okay so it's a uh, live actually there's uh, nothing that you know just a lab part okay yeah yeah okay we'll catch you on one on one for this panel. yeah please yeah sure if you uh, have any other questions, uh, you can ask me Srikant out of this lecture because it's a lecture is lecture. Yeah. Anybody has any other questions? Sunil, Kranti, Kumar. Come on guys, you're on online or not? 
Uh, someone raised a question in the chat. Uh, can you run oh, okay. have it? One second. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you brief in short the difference and need among the Intune 03 and Learning Mind Up? Same channel together. Yes. Okay. So your question is um, a specific to Azure Active Directory. So let me take it to Azure AD and explain. So within the AD, we have here a tenant. We have taken first as initially as this, and we map this tenant to uh, our custom domain. So is it necessary? Yeah, uh, it is necessary. You're not going to work in a uh, in a lab environment kind of thing, right? You're going to work in a company like maybe IBM or whatever the company. So they will be mapping to their own uh, company name. If not, what happens is users have to log in with their on tenant .com. It, it doesn't look good to the user experience point of view. Okay. And, uh, and yes, uh, the tenant remains same. As I said earlier, if you catch my point, Microsoft works based on the tenant ID. We work on a tenant name as a humans, right? So computers uh, in the back end, the technology works based on a tenant ID, meaning uh, uh, it just uh, in the back end, it doesn't matter what domain. In my case, I have another domain also here. Like I can re verify other domain it's not just limited to one domain your company might have uh, multiple uh, might might acquire some other company also in that case you can you know uh, verify here and that user the same user can be part of another user in this case maybe either it IBM or maybe either it Microsoft or something else okay so I hope this is clear uh, Kranti the question Yeah, got it. Thanks. So anybody else has a question? Srikant. Uh, we have two Srikants, Srikant Sri Ramadas or Srikant. Anybody oh. can open up. Oh. Yeah. Yes, Srikant, no questions? Okay. You got everything you understood? Okay, sure. Um, Satish. Uh, still is in a mute. Seems to be. It's too late for him. I think. Yeah, Srikant, you slept. Sri Ramadas. Okay. Okay. Nobody has any questions. Then thank you. Uh, thanks for joining today, and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Hope if you like. Tomorrow. Yeah. Can I okay. call you on WhatsApp now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll post to okay. the call. You can always talk. No problem. Yeah. Okay, if you have it, and I, and also on top of this, just the one additional thing. If you have any questions, um, in a weekend, I know you know it's a full dump altogether. So in a weekdays, if you want to connect for some time, I'm I'm open for that also. Maybe for 10-15 minutes, you have some doubts to do because you're doing on a weekend and. Um, weekdays you want to give it a try and come back yeah you're welcome okay i can take you one to one some kind of you know troubleshooting or maybe some kind of an explanation all of that okay with limit to 15 to 30 minutes or so yeah do you have a like weekend classes too or only uh, weekends weekdays also i have okay weekdays also i have but i'm just not trying to set up a batch so if it is a weekdays it's normally um 7 a.m. IST to 8.30 IST. Okay, and I did actually mention, uh, if you just Google uh, YouTube, uh, you have my, I think, uh, so this is what uh, my channel, okay, you can go back to this channel and uh, this video has every, this uh, video has everything and also this is a document which I mentioned uh, uh, you can you know, fill out and get in contact with me All right, I will directly you. for different courses all of that stuff okay thanks uh, do you yeah yeah sorry application packaging anything like that uh, no uh, so 
to be frank i'm not going to uh, teach you the application packaging but i'm going to teach you what is needed for uh, intune specific let's say if i just go and do some kind of an you know, application deployment it needs actually uh, for windows 10 uh, it actually needs the line of business application all of this this actually win32 if i take it it actually needs a win uh, intune format so basically it will ask for the a specific Intune Win format. So, how to convert, uh, how to package this, I'm going to talk to you, but not the exe2 AMSA, all of that stuff. I'm sorry, my friend, because that's a completely different concept. Yeah. Normally, every company will have their own packaging team. Okay, okay. okay. Great. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. You all have a great day ahead. We'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend.